Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, the podcast for all that crap we just love to talk about. On Ye Old Bravs, I'm Ronnie. I'm here with my good friend, the love of my life, Ben. Ben Mandelker. Hello, Ben. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, Ben. Um, love your shirt, guys. Ben is wearing a Thank shirt you. with cedar trees on them. Do you know that that's yeah. the tree? Well, that, is that a cedar tree? It is, right? Um, no. I think what it's, kind I of tree know. is that? I think it might be just like a regular conifer. Cedar Maybe just a fir tree. Like well, I'm going to look up cedar trees it's, right uh, now. This is that's my, the tree of Lebanon. This is like my alpine kind of shirt. It has like cabins on it and trees on it. I'm going to go with Cedar Tree because Ben is repping Lebanon today. What? Tree of Lebanon. Holler. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Ben is all dressed up and he's sitting in front of a New York skyline because he's in New York City. I am sitting in my regular house skyline, so that's that's what I'm doing now. I'm staring at cedar trees on the on the internet. Uh, welcome to the, welcome me. to the show, everybody. Today is Vanderpump Rules Day. We're gonna get to that super sized episode in just a moment. But first, uh, come check us out. Our live shows. We've got an intimate live show for the Netflix Comedy Festival. Comedy's a joke. Uh, that's in Los Angeles in May, and then in May we're going to Europa. London, Birmingham, and Dublin. So join us. Get your tickets over at watchwhatcrappens.com. This is a video recap. You can find it on Patreon. We do them for every show. You can also mm-hmm. find them a week later over on YouTube. If you just, I don't know, want to go through thousands of hours of archives, you're welcome to do so. Also, bonus episodes are on Patreon. This week is a trailer trash. It's where we break down a trailer. This week is Jersey, the new season of Jersey. A lot of ruffles, a lot of yelling, a lot of accents. A lot of divorces, a lot of fighting, a lot, lot of food throwing. Teeth. Teeth. Tam. Huge teeth. Huge, huge teeth. Huge bleach white teeth. Yeah. Not sure what's happening with the teeth in this country, but yeah. it's disturbing. I'm, I'm it's disturbed everywhere. at this point. I would like to give also a shout out. The reason why I put on a shirt that's more interesting than my typical generic t-shirt is because I just did... I recorded two podcasts here in the city. First, I went on to the Elvis Duran uh, 15-minute morning show podcast. So that should be dropping. It might already be out by now. I think it's a daily podcast. So go check out Elvis Duran. If you are a New Yorker and you listen to Z100, you know Elvis Duran. And then um, also, I just did a guest spot on a show called Serial Killers. We met the Serial Killers guys at the iHeart Awards. They do a podcast about cereal, trying cereal. So uh, I went on, I tried a cereal. It was a, um, it was like a hybrid episode. So we just kind of like talked about cereal. We talked about reality TV. We talked about board games. So it's just kind of like a chat. So check out both of those things. Uh, on Elvis Duran, we talked about Real Housewives and all that fun stuff. It was so fun. Thank you to both podcasts for having me. And, you know, uh, go check it out. So, yeah. Support other women, Okay exciting times over there you know what I, i'm glad you're having fun in this open relationship <laughs> i'm cheating on ronnie with elvis duran hope you're having fun with that um so everybody uh welcome to vanderpump rules this is one of those episodes where nobody looks good and i love that kind of an episode uh where mm-hmm. everyone's just kind of an asshole in it and it reminds you why we watch a show because you all suck, okay? All of you all suck. And I fucking love it. I love it when it's like that. I love when there's not just one person to root for. And you're just kind of rooting against everybody. At least that's yeah. how I felt. I was like, by the end of this, I was like, oh, yeah, you all fucking suck. You're all fucking monsters. And I can't wait to rip on every single one of you. This was a great episode. It was really entertaining. But it was also great because it was our first like true petty Vanderpump rules episode of the season because the first half of the season has grappled with oh Tom Sandoval how do we be friends with Tom Sandoval how do we be friends with Ariana how do we do this what how does this group move forward from the trauma of last season but they've kind of now like they've established what the group dynamic is and like let's get back to petty bullshit so now we have an episode that's just about gossip and rumors and cheating and indiscretions, and it's classic Vanderpump rules. And hypocrisy, and about holding things against people from a fucking 12 years ago. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. everything that we love. 
and a random below deck crossover that's totally unexplained. But we'll get to that. Yeah. And of course, of course, look who he's friends with. Of course he's friends with Katie. I can't with the fucking below deck guy who runs down the street giving people high fives. I mean, yeah. Can it just, mm-hmm. you know, everything just comes together in this episode for me. He's like, it's like friends. the souffle was finally baked. I was like, thank God. Because, you know, there are so <laughs> many like... seasons of Vanderpump Rules where we're just like, oh, my God, this is going to suck, isn't it? And then as it starts to suck more, we're like, oh, my God, surely it's not going to suck the whole season. And then it sucks the whole season. Um, and then there are seasons where you're like, this is amazing. And it stays amazing. Like, you know, there's peaks and valleys. You know, we all get it. We've all been in relationships with TV shows. <laughs> right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> But this one, I was like, I'm not sure about this. And it's pulling through. You know, it's pulling yeah. through, guys. I'm into this season. I have to say, I'm really into it. I think it's so good. Um, and this episode was wonderful. It was great. It was just, it was the, the episode, the exact episode we needed. We may have to even um, bookmark this episode as a potential live show down the road. Like for those days where we need like to do um, a vintage ep- or like we just no. have to like, you know, the reason why, here's the reason why. Because the Tom Sandoval breathing exercise moment was so hilarious. I was literally laughing out loud watching him doing his breathing exercises. I was like, this, this was epic. Yeah, it's definitely one of those episodes where you're like, well, we're in L.A. This show yeah. is definitely in L.A. I was reading um, Vanderpod recaps, as I do on Instagram, because she recaps all of the extra podcast because everybody on this show has a podcast now <laughs> so to really know what's going on you have to go listen to twenty thousand podcasts which of course i'm not going to do you know um but thanks to this uh, account i get to know but this is another reminder this is from dana and katie's uh podcast which is called disrespectfully there's something about disrespectfully her uh so they are talking about how raquel's been outing Logan like oh Logan knew like Raquel is still Raquel is still finding a way to make every single episode about Tom Sandoval I don't know when that why that's surprising since everybody else on the cast is still able to do this every single day of their lives talk about the Scandoval but uh they're talking about it Dana and Katie how Raquel is blaming everybody else like oh well Logan must have known so Logan is a bad friend because Logan walked in on us cuddling you've heard this right So this line is from it, and it's just so L.A. So they were under a blanket, and Logan saw them. And Katie says, in a social media room, not the bathroom. And Dana says, yeah, in a social media room, not the bathroom. A social media room? That's a thing? People have a fucking Twitter room? (laughs) So L.A. I do remember. So L.A. I do remember that Tom set up a whole like Zoom room and that was like a thing during the pandemic that he was like very proud of his like perfectly appointed social media room. And then there's another one in here where Dana is saying, yeah, I'm really mad at Sheena because Sheena went on Juicy Scoop, the Juicy Scoop podcast, and she talked about a threesome that almost happened and it didn't almost happen. That really hurts my feelings that she would go like, talk about a threesome. Like, oh, don't shoot me for a threesome. <laughs> She's like, it's just this whole thing. I was like, it's like being back in West Hollywood. And then she says something like, so wait, when did that happen, Katie? Was it before or after my nose job? I was like, oh my God, <laughs> how am I not listening to this? Oh my God. God bless this show. So the episode opens up. God bless this mess. God bless this mess. God bless Southwest Airlines for their judicious flight schedule that goes right over James and Ali's house because we the very first thing we see is that airplane. So no, we know where we're going next. I mean, we're going I think to Ali the... Bali's house. Every Ali time Bali. I see a Southwest plane fly overhead, I'm like, oh, better go dress Ali Bali. This is literally the funniest thing that that the post production department on this show has ever done is the repeated visual cue. Of the Southwest Airline flight going overhead. It is just, it cracks me up every single time. It just shades James and Allie week after week after week. So James is on, you know, he's putting another brick down on his long and windy path to becoming a creepy, knife-wielding, lifetime husband. Lifetime movie husband. Um, And we find out that James dresses Allie. And she's like, yeah, Yeah. I don't like picking out my clothes because it's really hard. So James does it. He's like, how about this Ali Bali? A little Bobby moment. 
Bobby's here right now. <laughs> I think this look, look really cute on you. So, uh, what yeah, was she... I made for? <laughs> <laughs> he steams my dresses for me, and he doesn't curl my hair yet. But I always joke because we're working up to that. This guy, I mean, when you talk about playing house, he is literally playing house. He is dressing up his girlfriend, putting up their proverbial white picket fence. Yeah, it's all going to come shattering down. Like, next season is going to be the James and Allie um, chaos season. Yeah, I don't know. I never see it coming. Like, I really never saw it coming with Raquel. I was completely shocked by that one. So, I will be surprised. Listen, James is still, like, James, talk about peaks and valleys. James goes, he has his disaster seasons, and then he has his I'm a good little boy seasons. And in the good little boy seasons, he likes to manufacture an image of himself and his girlfriends and like whatever's going on. Like we're just a perfect family that's moved. We're, we're moving on and we're adults now and everything is good and there are no problems whatsoever. And then of course it teeters into disaster the following season. And so it next season, into some fucking like ice cream replacement therapy for addiction. Yeah. And it just all, I mean, I've never seen somebody so sad eating ice cream. Now I've seen somebody sad while they're eating ice cream, but I've never seen somebody eating ice cream in a way like I have to eat this ice cream or, or I can't be happy. You know what I mean? Like right. I've never seen somebody, usually people are sad and then they eat the ice cream to feel better. <laughs> James was eating it, you know, because it was like a replacement for drugs and stuff, which, you know, don't, don't treat ice cream like that. I feel like ice cream deserves its own respect and its own addiction. It's not replacement therapy. It's not something we shouldn't be grateful for. Whenever you fucking have ice cream, you need to be goddamn grateful for it. <laughs> I'm always grateful for ice cream. Me I'm too. Literally... That's why it was so, so disturbing. Grateful. Yeah. It was I hard would, to watch it. I would pick out an outfit for my ice cream and curl its hair and let that ice cream sing what was I made for because I love <laughs> I it that 100% much. would. I now, would spend a million and a half dollars to live under a, an airplane path. If it, if it meant living for ice, ice cream. cream. <laughs> yeah. I would literally do everything that James does for ice cream. I would do it all. <laughs> I will. I love it. I love ice cream so much. I love it. I'm obsessed with ice cream. I'm obsessed. So he's, um, <laughs> and remember he was going to that place. It was like, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't trust the place that he was going. Like sweet rice cream or something. Yeah. Where they would have like, oh, it's like, um, what am I trying to say? Savory ice creams or like they make mint ice cream. It's not like the sweet mint ice cream. It's like natural mint crushed up with, ugh. No, no. Give me fucking real ice cream. Don't fucking fake the shit, you know? By the I don't way, know why I'm cursing like this today, you guys. I'm by sorry. The way, any kids in the car? I'm, I'm going to say this because now you brought this up. Don't, if you're making mint ice cream, don't make it from steeped mint leaves. No. It's not going to work. Disgusting. Mint extract. It should taste like a... Uh, a peppermint patty people have worked like, for literal oh, centuries people have like worked for literal centuries to process food okay that's not something that just happened can we stop shitting all over processed food they're making an effort okay you know it's so funny that you just said that literally as i'm recording here i'm like hey i just got an email from myself how did that happen and i forgot that i had scheduled an nbd fancy where i talked about making grilled cheese and i am putting forward that you have to make grilled cheese with american cheese it's you know what processed well, that's food. Shameful. No, <laughs> that that's it. That no. that on the other hand is it. Okay, you grilled just ruined cheese. this whole segment. Grilled cheese. Right, go that ahead. Is just a edit this a... out. Just, let's just start with come to Europe. <laughs> We're going to Europe. Ali Bali. All right. Ali Bali. Never with American cheese. Ali Bali. Bobby's having a moment. Bobby's having a moment. American cheese on your grilled cheese, everyone. That's a place for processed food. I was trying to support your processed food thing. And you just, you shut the I know, out. but it has its place. You know what I mean? Grilled che American cheese. <laughs> and a grilled I'm cheese. I'm sorry. I'm just fucking with you. You know I'm a big fan it's of over. Velveeta and mac and cheese. Yeah. I thought you yeah. were I thought you were going to be so 100% in favor. I, thought you were like, <laughs> I just yes, wanted man. to watch you slowly spiral. And then you were like, you were like, no. I was like, what? If you watch the video, you can probably see me look so confused. Like, did Ryan just say no to American cheese on a grilled cheese? I did. I was going to see if I could make you spiral. You did. Um, you did. You, you, you I, saw, I saw it starting and it felt good. I'm not going to lie. I mean, American cheese. <laughs> I love you. I love you so goddamn much. Yeah, like, You're my I little American you cheese. You're my Okay, casting. so James stops for Allie, uh, creepy, and uh, nobody's surprised. So now the conversation turns to Joe and James is like, so you're inviting Joe to Hotel Ziggy, which we're really making. Ha 
I mean, people are really making this Hotel Ziggy happening or happen on the show. Hotel Ziggy looks like a Best Western it with the DJ. A best... Is that oh, what no, it I... was? Actually, I think it was the Grafton Hotel. Sorry, it's next to the Was best the Grafton Western. a hotel a Best Western? No, it was a hotel that was based off of the books of Sue Grafton. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's just It's, it's just like a H is for hotel room. <laughs> R P is for, room is for phone. <laughs> R is for what? Room service. <laughs> she was killed by A for American cheese. <laughs> Ali Bali. Ali Bali, we don't eat American cheese here. We're trying to be a good family for TV. I, uh, last time I came to LA, I was like, maybe I'll stay in Hotel Ziggy because that would be camp. You know, it's like, it's always on VPR and that would be fine. <laughs> I was reading the reviews and just laughing my ass off. Because it's, you know, a Best Western with a DJ stand in the middle, like yeah. I just said. So it's people like, uh, so I'm staying in this hotel and they were literally playing club music outside my door. Like in the, <laughs> basically in the hallway, you know. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I want to check it out. I want to see it because it's now part of like Vanderpump Rules. But I have, it reminds me of that awful hotel we stayed in in Chicago. It was like a day's in that was trying to be like Hotel Ziggy, and it was like the worst oh, hotel of all time. The worst. That place the worst. sucked. Okay, so. Um, He's playing okay, at Hotel Ziggy, and so James is like, tonight I'm DJing at Hotel Ziggy. It's a party to be at the Sunset Boulevard, and there's not like, oh, it's not like, oh, you can come and you can't come. Like, everyone can come. It's everyone's invited to my parties. I show up, a DJ crew, DJ equipment, and a crowd, you know, Ali Bali on my side, ice cream on my hand, and you will have the best business your place has had in a long time. So get ready, Hotel Ziggy. 13 more people coming to your courtyard tonight. <laughs> yeah, because Allie's like, did you invite Joe to come to Hotel Ziggy? I hope everyone's not mad about that. And he's like, of course I invited her. I'm a fucking DJ, okay? A DJ is even lower in the ranks than being an improviser. You're begging your friends to come to your show. I don't give a fuck <laughs> if somebody cheated on you right in front of your fucking children. I'm inviting them to my show. I have to have people there, okay? Improv doesn't run itself. <laughs> you need an audience there. It's not yes, it's yes and. It's like your friends who are comics, which we have plenty of, who are just like, you guys want to come to my birthday? It's also a comedy show. You're like, God damn it, you tricked me into this. <laughs> you know? I'm constantly getting tricked by people into going to their shows. Yeah. So Allie's talking about how the last time she was at Hotel Ziggy, um, she had that fir awkward first meeting with Raquel, and we see that from a year ago. And Allie's like, yeah, Raquel, I appreciate you guys' relationship because he'd be a completely completely different if he didn't have you. And Raquel's like, huh, wait a second. That was actually mean. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> um, so then James is like, a lot has changed since then. That's for damn sure, right? And she's like, yeah, a lot has changed since then, James. He's like, literally everything put on these shoes. Okay, this is so Pisces of me. So then we go over to Tom and Ariana's house, and uh, oh God, what a gift. It's Billy Lee back on our TVs. Jesus Christ, speaking of things nobody asked for, okay? Get off of my television. I did not ask you here. Go, go away, shoot. Well, she is here. Billy Lee has arrived, and she's like, hey, and Sandoval's like making his bed. And uh, she's like, wow, it's like clean in here. And he's like, uh, yeah, it is. And she, and she's like, yeah, like every time I like come and go from your house, I just get like so fucking nervous. And he's like, why? Because like Ariana. He's like, everybody has a roommate, right? <laughs> My roommate of 10 years. Get it? Get it? <laughs> it's yeah. just lying. Yeah, you're, you're hilarious. You're hilarious, Tom. So uh, they're talking about Hotel Ziggy. The whole town is a buzz with talk of Hotel Ziggy. Ziggy. You, you going, going to Ziggy tonight? Ziggy? You going to the HZ tonight? So um, Billy Lee is really trying to make her friend T a thing. She's like, yeah, I'm bringing my girl T. You remember T? How there's the girl you didn't talk to at your party? Let's, try, let's do it again. Let's go try it a second time. And we see a flashback of him doing his line that you just did about like the having a roommate. <laughs> That's my, my ex-girlfriend of 10 years, which last week he did the same line, but to girls in the pool. So he's just using this line wherever he can. 
Yeah, this is him like being hilarious. It's like I'm sure you've yeah. all heard. And this time, the girls are like, "Yeah, we've heard." Like this time, they hated him, which I liked, because uh, last week they showed the girls looking awkward, but they were also like, "Oh, I mean, I guess we're on TV." And these girls were like, "We hate you. We're just here to hate you on TV." So, yeah. <laughs> So, um, by the way, did you hear that he doesn't pay that? Remember how he had that bartender last week? Well, she apparently came out on you know, TikTok or one of them internet sites, them websites on the internet. Yeah. And was like, yeah, TikTok. Tom Sandoval just calls you his friend so he doesn't have to pay you because I'm not even his friend and he didn't pay me for bartending as a friend. Wow. So, there you wow, go. Everyone. Typical shocker. Yeah. Blow me down. That, that one shocked me. So, um, so that so he's talking with Billy Lee and everything, and he's like, "Well, I don't know what's going on, with Ariana, but I love this house, and it's like a great house. But like, I mean, the ball's in her court. She has to just like respond to an email, so we have like some sort of like plan of action, dude." Yeah, um, he wants to keep this house, uh, and she does not want him to have it because he wants it so bad, you know. But yeah. kind of team Ariana on that one. Why should he get the fucking house? What if that's her dream house? You shouldn't. Yeah. yeah, cough it up, sir. Although in the news, we found found out this week that Ariana just bought a one point six million dollar home in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah, to which I say that's cheap. It's a good deal. I, I know. There, I was like, enjoy your shack. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your decrepit garage with a bed in it. Because one point six million in the Hollywood Hills. Wow. A chief, right? I think anywhere in LA, that's that's pretty cheap. Um, no, it's, so it's crazy. yeah, real estate, my guys. Am I right, guys? I'm a real expert loving Redfin these days. Like, yeah. I was a Zillow person. Then Zillow started fucking it up. Then I became a Realtor.com person. And right now, I'm really into Redfin. Uh, so I'd like to thank them for everything they do for me. Yeah, it's great. They do great work. Great work. Um, did I think that maybe they were a website about seafood purveying? Um, did I think I could maybe get some, order some scallops from there perhaps but it turns perhaps. out redfin real estate but only bullied ones only ginger ones we're only we're only serving red-headed fish who were bullied in school oh i see it's very specific <laughs> only um fish that have had a hard knock life all right <laughs> <laughs> the scallops like maybe far away I don't know Tomorrow. why I started that so high. It's like I don't even know my Tomorrow. own. <laughs> yeah, come on, Ronnie. My own range. You okay, gotta give so... yourself some place to move into there. You gotta, you gotta move. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I know. We we gotta get to the big chorus, people. So <laughs> Billy Lee's like, well, not that you need to jump into another relationship, but my girl T, you know, like she's my girl. She's my girl T. So like, maybe I should get with my girl T. You know what I mean? And he's like, well, I did just wash my sheets. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm nailing it today. Oh, well, like, I mean, at least uh, if you didn't live with your ex-girlfriend like you do, you know, you could have people over. He's like, oh, roommate joke, roommate joke. She's like, oh, you're so hilarious. Why is Billy Lee so intent on getting tea together with Sandoval? I think is it just makes, it, I guess it makes, elevates Billy, Billy Lee's position yes. a bit. Yes, because gets, it gets, gets her, her on the show. It gives her it gives her an anchor on the show. You know, she got them together, so she's the one that you go talk to whenever something's wrong with T. You know, you go right. have a discussion with Billy Lee. What the fuck is T hanging out with all these old people for? That's a great question that does come up a little bit later. So right. um, then on the other side of the house, we see Ariana getting ready, and she FaceTimes Anne. <laughs> And is getting ready to go to Taylor Swift. And is like, hey, wow, so excited to get a phone call right now. It's Ariana. Wow, this is exciting. Please tell me I don't have to come over there and clean up dog poop because I'm going to Taylor Swift and I spent $2,500 to sit in the parking lot. Please tell me. Please You're tell me so that. beautiful. My God, I love looking at you right now on FaceTime. I'm going to go see Taylor Swift tonight, but I put your face on her. I put your face on her body on this T-shirt. Do you like it? <laughs> I hope you like it. You know what? Sometimes when I think of you, you know what I do? I say, it's me. Hi, I'm not the problem. It's me because you're not the problem. You're actually the hero, not the anti-hero. Oh, my God. Don't you love it? I call myself Weird weird Ann Yankovic sometimes when I do this with songs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little weird. 
So Ariana's like, oh, love it. Lavender Haze vibes. Love that. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Anything. Anything you want. I will come over. You want me to come over? I'll come over right now. I'm under your desk. Look under your desk. <laughs> Just kidding. I could be, though. If you invited me. I wouldn't come You're, if you didn't invite me. That would be weird. But you want to right a bracelet? I made it a beaded bracelet for Taylor Swift. I don't know, but I can give it to you, Ariana. Whatever you need. Dun, you want dun. my ticket? I don't need to. I don't even like Taylor Swift anymore. You go. You go in my place. It'll be like I'm there. Dun, dun. Lava. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're getting creepy right now. I'm just uh, saying I'm getting ready, but I'm going to leave in 45 minutes. So I just need to know is Tom downstairs? Oh, for Christ's sake. Stop being scared if Tom's downstairs. Here's what you do get yourself a super soaker or a stun gun. But I was. <laughs> a super soaker? I don't even know where this is going. <laughs> I would start but with a super said. soaker. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Anne alone. It's bad enough that Anne has to clean up Tom's shit all over the place without having to go spy for you and find out if you have to walk in the same room as Tom. Fuck that. Get you a super soaker and spray his stupid ass whenever he's in your way. He should be the one hiding, not you. <laughs> yeah, so Anne. Um, so, like, I feel like I'm on the verge of full burnout, so I need an assistant. So... I was going to ask, do you know anybody? She's like, oh, my God, an assistant. Oh, my God. Hey, can I be in the running, please? Can I do, Or can I just run? Can I run? Am I allowed to run right now? I forget. Am I allowed to do this? Please, can I be your assistant instead of Tom's? I would love that so much. Can I be in the running? Like running to your house, which I am. Oh, my God, I'm running to your house. <laughs> Look outside. <laughs> I'm here. We I mean, will never, ever, ever be not Boston assistant. Because <laughs> we're going to be Boston assistant. That's what I'm trying to say. Too many double negatives. I'm so sorry. And she's like, of course you can, Anne. And she tells us, Anne's so sweet. You know, she deserves more than having to put up with Tom, you know. But um, I don't know if I'm the one to do it, but someone needs to save Anne. Hashtag save Anne. <laughs> save her. And she's like, but, but you know. Oh, Ariana's like, you know, look, I don't want him to get pissed because that's not cool, like, poaching his assistant, you know. And she goes, but I want to work with you so bad. Please. please. Yeah, I totally understand. Um yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to go cry at the Taylor Swift concert now. It's all totally ruined. Uh. <laughs> By the way, I have to... Can I tell you something? Can I confess something? So I had a like, huge amount of FOMO that I didn't see the Euros tour. And I I just am like, I, I, I want to go. And I, and she's going to New Orleans. There's The Euros tour is still going to go keep going. Would it be wild if I bought myself a solo ticket to see the Taylor Swift Eras tour in New Orleans? Oh my gosh, do it. Is that wild? They're so <laughs> expensive, but I kind of feel like I, when I went to the Madonna concert, I was like, this concert's amazing, but I can only imagine what it must have been like to see Madonna at her peak, like a blonde ambition. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to like see Taylor Swift in 25 years and imagine what it must have been like to have gone to an iconic concert tour. So I think... I'm going to do something wild and take myself to New Orleans and buy a solo ticket off the secondary market. It's going to be a huge amount of money. Is this wild? Is this crazy? Should I do Go this? Go for it. Do it. Live your best life. Okay. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm live scared. your best life. Okay. I'm um, going to do it. Yeah. Go for it. Why not? Okay. And people will now be like, hey, I live in New Orleans, but let's party. <laughs> and you guys can like have a Taylor Swift party. <laughs> I imagine there'll be like a bunch of 22-year-old girls, and you guys can go just like party it up. I'm going to dress like Anne. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, Ariana, I'm at the, going to the Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> Flip your worry, I'll just be Listen, a... I took a road trip one time to see Liza Minnelli in Atlanta with some wow. girls from Into the Woods. So, okay. Listen, I'm not going to tell you not to live your dreams. Okay. I will do it. I saw some amazing scarf work that night. Was it Liza's <laughs> best vocal work? No. She's she's had a rough road, but she did play with scarves a lot and jump over them and twirl them. and uh, it, was, it was amazing. And 100 you know degree what? heat. I mean, she still got it. And it's like Liza says, you got to ring them bells. So I'm going to ring this. I'm going to ring sure the bells do, in StubHub. Ben, ring them bells. Okay. Okay, everyone in New Orleans, I'm going to Taylor Swift. <laughs> so um, Anne's like, please let me work for you. And uh, then we go over to Schwartz meeting Lala for smoothies at a place called Creation, but with a K. Because yeah. God forbid you try and steal from the Lord. <laughs> 
No, well, you know it's healthy for you because they turn the C into a K. And K is an inherently healthier letter than C, apparently. Really? Who's vitamin K? Well, it's not called special C. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. (laughs) So Schwartz is like, I love this place. Whoa, whoa. By the way, I'm in the midst of a sober bender. Isn't that crazy? Because, you know, like, uh, can we do some syringes? (laughs) Yeah, get it? Because it's a bender. It's a bender of sobriety. I want to know who the shirtless guy was who was in that creation. Like, how do you just walk just shirtless into a juice shop? I mean, I get it, but like, people in LA are ridiculous. So, um, I'm sorry, did that happen before or after my nose job? <laughs> just trying to get this <laughs> timeline down. <laughs> so, they're uh, ordering at Creation. Um, if you, by the way, I, I've been to Creation, and like, if you if you get like water there, it's like green. <laughs> It's so it's got like chlorophyll in it. It's it's so LA. It's so really? LA. Yeah. Wow. So um he's like, You should have some dried strawberries. They're so good. They're like strawberries, but they're dried. And she's like, Okay, they look like dates. <laughs> so sounds like shets. Sounds like I'm gonna shets. Like, hey, can I order some? I'm gonna shets. And he goes, <laughs> Wait, well, we're on a date? She goes, No, they look like dates. Not we're on a date. He's like, Just kidding <gasps> about it. Just kidding about it. I'm just kidding. I'm just uh-huh. kidding. I was pretending like you were Joseph for a second. Ha, ah, joking. We're on a get date. So they go outside. They do these like syringes that have, I guess they're sober syringes. I don't know what they really are. And he's like, oh, let's do these because ah, he can't do jello shots across the street. At Tom Tom with me. Oh, my cute little boy. <laughs> and Lala's like, no, I cannot. So they do it. And uh, Lala is like She's joking like, about scoring it on me. <laughs> Whenever I feel awkward, I talk about my vagina <laughs> sex. It's not a great quality. So, <laughs> so have you ever had sober sex? And he's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have sober sex. Like when I'm in a relationship, I have sober sex. Oh yeah, I love sober sex. It's really Wait a good. second. Wait a second. Did you say sober sex or sobering sex? Because Katie and I had very sobering sex. <laughs> I would have sex with Katie, and then I would immediately feel sober. Is that weird? <laughs> I would cry. And then all of a sudden, all my decisions I'd ever made in my life would come into stark relief. Yeah, very sobering stuff. Yeah, you know, let's do, let's go more down the sobriety path, because it's hilarious, you know, when you're talking to a sober person and just disregarding their sobriety. Like, it's so funny that you're sober, because, like, I'm kind of sober, too. Like, I'm addicted to being sober sometimes. Like, sometimes I'll be, like, not sober, but then I'm like, you know what? what's going to feel like being fucked up? Being sober. So then I yeah. get sober. Like, right now. Like, I'm sober for, like, five minutes. It's so hilarious. I'm, like, on, like, a sober bender, right? Isn't that so fun? Aren't I just, like, saying things that you as a sober person are not going to get really mad at me saying, like, with my with my non-alcoholism privilege? Isn't that, isn't that how you feel? <laughs> my non-alcoholism privilege. I understand what he means in a way because when I started kind of sobering up, it did feel like a different kind of being wasted because I just wasn't used to being awake all day. <laughs> I would be like, wow. I would watch an entire show on TV at night and be like, I just watched a whole show. Like, I have sleeping issues. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. It's like, babe, <laughs> you're not taking anything. I love that you, I love that's how you, that's how you reason yourself. Babe. babe. <laughs> I do. I have to talk myself down. You know, I'm single all the time. I have to talk to myself. I have to be like, this isn't that important. Everything is okay. Is your heart racing? Take your blood pressure. You can do this. Choo, 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 choo. We're going to have some cereal right now. Choo, choo, choo. Special C. Um, <laughs> I uh, I just felt like I had to imagine that as like to someone who is like a sober person and putting in like the work and the effort of having to be sober to like Lala to have someone be to say like, man, I have to binge on like being sober in a way that's like, I have to imagine that must be annoying to hear like this, like acting like you're like you're going through like you're you're experiencing the, this novelty of, of an experience when this is actually what like Lala's life is now I have to I I personally think I would be annoyed but then again I'm not in Lala's shoes but well yeah because people start flailing around acting like idiots around a sober like, person like they're a because hero. it feels like you're judging that person 
I think that to a non-sober person, it feels like, oh, you're sober? That means you think I'm an alcoholic, right? So it's all this dancing all over it. Like, oh, well, you're sober. I love sobriety. Like, I try that out sometimes. Yeah, sobriety's great. Love sobriety. You want to go across the street and have jello shots? Just kidding. We're going to do shots here because they're healthy. I love sobriety. This is so fun. God, I love it. And, like, you turn into fucking Shannon Bedore, you know, being across from a sober right. person. And I think that's what he's doing. Also, I think that, like, binging on sobriety, like, that is inherently not sober to do that because the binge implies that eventually like you stop being stop doing that so that's inherently not like a sober thing it's just like you are just not drinking for a few days and like that's <laughs> that doesn't mean you've binged on sobriety it just means you just haven't drunk you just ha you're not just not drinking but you're gonna go back to drinking so uh, yeah he's just <laughs> trying to be i just cute. feel like it's like taking it's i just feel like for people I imagine, and maybe I'm fighting a fight that is like not even mine to fight because I don't, and I don't even know why I'm doing this, but it's just the nature of Vanderpump Rules. Just like him saying, like, "Wow, I did like a binge of sobriety. I did. I was like sober for like a week." It's like, yeah, congrats. I have to do it for the rest of my life. <laughs> so shut up. That's yeah, what, that's what I would say personally. Yeah. Um, but you know, you, you got to dance. It's like I'm not an alcoholic, am I? Am I an alcoholic? Oh my God, are you calling me an alcoholic right now? <laughs> I, I want shots. Just kidding. I don't want shots. Why did I say that? I'm sober. I'm sober right now. I'm totally fine. Anyway, I don't know why I'm speaking on behalf of sober people when I'm not sober myself. So I'll just be quiet because it's um, Bravo right now, and we're fucking inundated. It's more like it's talk it's about Tom sobriety Schwartz. and drugs, and this is a conversation on almost every show right now. And so you know, it's in the conversation like that we start thinking about it. And like, am I sober? Like, what is what is sobriety? Because these shows have also redefined what sobriety means. Because we've it's seen it's like there's the a reality record. reckoning going on. I, for me, I think it's more like the reason why I started doing that little monologue. It's more like it's just the shorts of it all that he does this thing that's like cute and like so like i'm on your journey with you and you're like it's still bullshit though schwartz everything you say is bullshit yeah so um also the main theme of this episode is these people don't like each other at all anymore uh, they used to at least have to work in a restaurant together and that's how they were kind of connected and then after that they were like well we're still on a show together let's still hang out but now they don't hang out they don't like each other they clearly all hate each other and so every time they get together it's so fucking awkward and it's like they're starting over you know so when does tom schwartz ever hang out with lala never yeah. so that's yeah. why it's so fucking awkward you know so here we go and that's almost every scene on the show today is people who hate each other having to hang out and it's really fun it's like a fun experiment mm. Yeah, it's really it takes us back to the roots of this show. So Schwartz is like, so are you going to go to um, Hotel Ziggy tonight? She's like, yes, I think I'm going to go. Is Sandoval's coming? And he's like, yeah. Oh, James invited him? Wowsk. 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 That's crazy. I can't wait to have tacos. Pink tacos. <laughs> like my pussy. Sorry, I'm feeling really awkward right now. <laughs> I'm awkward. <laughs> I'm awkward. Hotel so Ziggy. Awkward right more now. like Hotel Ziggy for vaginas. <laughs> I'm not going to Hotel Ziggy, but I'm going to Hotel Squirties. You want to go? Oh, just kidding. Sorry. Sorry. I don't know why I said that. Everyone bring a punch. I'm going to be squirting all over Hotel Ziggy tonight. Sorry. I'm awkward. I speak about vaginas when I get nervous. Last time I was at Hotel Ziggy, I left that bed so fucking wet. <laughs> they thought, I thought a fire went off and then the sprinklers happened. I was almost hired to be the water feature in the courtyard because I was squirting so much. Frank Sinatra started playing because the hotel thought I was Frank thought I was the Bellagio fountain for a second. Yeah, I was almost hired. <laughs> I was almost hired by the Groves to take on my new alternate personality, Frank Squirtnatra. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, um, uh, Tom, Tom gets to come. Oh, and we saw uh, Jack say Tom, Tom, you know, and Jackson, Tom. Like, it's not like they hate each other or anything. They just haven't seen each other in, like, I don't know, years? <laughs> yeah, because they fucking hate each other. That's why. Yeah. My God. And then we see uh, Sandoval and him having a dumpster talk at Sir. And Sandoval saying, that's the kind of friend you want, Jack, to kind of never question you and agree with you all the time. OK, fine. Then that's what you want. Then go have them, Jax. Go have them. Which is so funny because that's exactly the line that Jax uses now all the time. Yeah. I'm your friend. You need a friend. You need a friend who's gonna, like, ask you the tough questions, Kristen. Yeah. So, um... Anyway, so Schwartz just says that they persevered and everything. They literally did not persevere. You no, forced, you tricked them into hanging out together. They tolerated. Yeah. Okay. 
And so, um, and then uh, Schwartz is like, yeah, it was good. It was amazing. And, you know, oh, man, I think I have post-Scandival brain fog. Not to be confused to pre-Scandival brain fog. Not to be confused with just the brain fog I just live with every single day. But when oh I God, see is that. Is this brain fog or reality? Because I'm, I'm sober right now. I can't I'm even tell. I'm on a brain fog bender right now. <laughs> I'm so addicted to brain fog. Hey, can I have a straw? Because I want to, sn- I want to snort up this. Um, what were we saying? It was uh, brain fog. <laughs> I want to snort fog. up this brain fog. <laughs> straw. <laughs> Who's not sober? I can't even think of a word we said two seconds ago. Brain uh, fog. <laughs> brain fog. Um, so Sa- Schwartz is being very sly because what he's about to do. Well. He, he's then saying, I mean, when I see what Tom did compared to what we've all done, I, I know, I feel like everyone's cheated in some way, right? Like, we've all cheated. We've all done stupid shit. I mean, I cheated. I was a makeout slut. I mean, uh, I mean, I was cheating 12 years ago in Vegas. Anyway, God, I love this chlorophyll in this water. Oh, so God. he's just trying to slide that right in there while the heat's not on him. Just yeah. slide it in. Yeah. And she's like, what? And he's like, no one even knows that. Oh, my God, that was so long ago. I mean, it was the most innocuous thing, you know. I'm just saying, you know, we've all done stuff. She goes, wait a minute. You made out with Sheena once? I just squirted. it. <laughs> Sorry, you made me nervous. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was somewhere in Vegas. That's all. Pre- Pre-Katie? Pre-Katie? It's like, no. Uh, uh, maybe pre-during. <laughs> uh, it was a rocky moment. It was during a rocky moment. So yeah, he's like actually yeah. at the Rocky Mountain Fudge store, you know, and uh, I kissed her. Yeah. So Schwartz is really working for the producers this year. He's doing everything they ask. He's bringing Joe on camera. He's starting drama because nothing is happening this season. So he's starting shit by bringing Jax back and helping his show come out. Now he's starting some more drama so Katie can get mad at him some more. He's kind of producer planting. And last year he spent doing the Raquel storyline to get uh, Katie mad and keep talking. I mean, this guy is just such a fucker. You know, he's just well, doing everything. Him and Katie are still in a relationship. I don't care what anybody says. They, they can call each other single all they want to. They are so codependent on each other, on hurting each other's feelings, putting each other through hell and torturing each other and then apologizing later. Well, Katie doesn't apologize. <laughs> but he gets off on pissing off Katie. And then Katie gets off on becoming this huge victim and getting to mope around and cry and be, you know, Katie, be as Katie as she can about it. And then he gets to grovel and apologize and pretend like he's a good person until he kind of softens her up and then fucks her over again. Yeah. <laughs> Cycle. Rinse I think he's punishing her. He's punishing her because she didn't participate in Tahoe and that she and Ariana are like doing their own thing. And like, I think he's punishing her because a lot of people feel very caught. They're, they're afraid that like if people are friends with them. That then, um, with, with as them as in the Toms, that then they're gonna lose their friendship with Ariana and Kate. So I think he's like he's angry, and the way he gets revenge is he just says something that he knows will be really hurtful to Katie, and he he enters it right there in on the gossip on ramp with Lala, and um, because he's like, oh yeah, oh man, it's just a small thing, it's a little whatever, just brought it out, whatever. He's such a piece of work. It's also, um, he doesn't have Sheena on their side right now. Sheena's like kind of anti them at the bar. She's like, you're a brain man. I'm talking about this, Annabelle. You know, instead of being completely on their side because she's friends with Katie right now. So he's going to throw a wrench into that one too. You know, it's a numbers game at the end of the day. Mm Mm-hmm. So uh, Lala's like, so are you saying that Sheena dabbled in the group spits? And Schwartz's like, no, just like maybe microdosed, something like that. You know, really small. I'm a good little boy. Yeah. And so she's like, um, I'm going to be straight up with you, Schwartz. I'm fucking over people lying to my face. Okay. <laughs> Which, of course, Lala's going to make this about her. <laughs> you know, she's right. like, how the could she not Lala. tell me that she made out? with short because it's embarrassing would you fucking yeah. tell people yeah and she knows it would sheena knows it would actually cause chaos especially if it sounds like it was like a big nothing and so she knows lala's like sheena and i have gotten extremely close and we've become each other's vaults and i just just seems strange to me that at no point in time was she like girls i've got to tell you something i gotta spill some teasks like what's so Lala's Lala's like, does Kitty know? And Schwartz's like, no, well, 
I don't know if I told Katie, oh, 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 oh God, you're not going to gossip about this to everyone, will you? Oh, uh, man. Surely Lala's do? not going to tell anyone anything and get me in trouble. What have I done? Oh. <laughs> Hope Katie doesn't get upset and have an excuse to be all hurt now. So oh. then we go to Lala's apartment and Katie comes over and, you know, hates her. <laughs> It's another scene where people who really don't like each other are being forced to hang out. So Lala's like, um, hi, I'm just trying to enjoy a little clean time when I don't have oceans. Because the second she comes back, this entire area is going to be a fucking bomb. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way about the dogs. <sighs> That's what every parent loves. Is when dog owners are like, yeah, I feel the way about... I feel the same way about my dogs as you do about your babies. <laughs> They're like, uh, excuse me. Do you know you know how many tra- times I've gotten in trouble with actual parents about that? I'm like, yeah. Builder's like my baby. They're like, no, you don't get to do that. Okay. Yeah, because you're a- robbing parents of the th- one thing that they have, which is the ability to look down on you for not having a child. <laughs> exactly. They're like, you don't get to just have a dog. Your dog shits outside. Okay. When you have something shitting all over your face, okay. And then their first word is like, fuck you, gay wad. Okay, then you can come complain to us. But you have yeah. a dog. It can't talk. It can't argue. It can't kick you. It can't shit all over you. Stop it. No, the best is I'll one-up you when you say, oh, yeah, my plants are like my children. I have oh, to my take plants? All the time. Yeah, you can't do that with plants. That's the best because it's so <laughs> insulting. Oh, my God. Your child reminds me of my ficus. Oh my god! I have it's so funny. Like all the work, uh, it's like my oh my god! All the, I was up all night because my child was, had a fever, and I just had to take care of them, and they just would not go to sleep. It just requires so much work. I'm like, I get it, girl. Totally. I'm like growing some thyme in a little pot in my kitchen, and it is like not responding well. It's like, ugh, it's like I'm putting all this energy into you. Just let me sleep. Your kid reminds me of my succulent because it sucks. I've got. I've got some aloe, and it's just, like, dying. And I'm like, you're supposed to be a helpful plant, and you're not. It's just like, <laughs> I totally get it. Kids, am I right? Um. So Katie's like, yeah, because dogs, they have, like, all their stuffed animals, and then they gut them, and they leave a mess. And Lala's like, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so you're not dealing with the terrorism that is Rand's memory on your child. You don't have to look at Rand's every time. Your dog guts the toy, okay, bitch? So let's just change the conversation. So I had smoothies with at Creations with Schwartz. Yeah, it's the place with the K instead of the C. Yeah, it's super healthy. And um, so he drops on me. Well, he actually dropped a, his entire milkshake on me, which was really upsetting. But then after I cleaned it off, he then dropped on me that a few years ago, Sheena and I made out in Vegas. And Katie's like, what the actual fuck? Are you kidding me? <laughs> By the way, Lala, what a great friend Lala is. She's like, Sheena and I are like such good friends now. I'm running straight to her enemy yeah. with this with this information. And she's like, um, yeah, Katie's like, I just have like so many questions. Like, when was this? And where exactly was this? And was this the time that Schwartz said he went to Vegas and made out with one of Sheena's friends? And was it actually, in fact, Sheena? There are just so many lies in this group. It's hard to keep track. She sounds like she's starting up a podcast, right? It sounds like a true crime podcast. Like She should. Over the next seven episodes, we're going to dive deep into this mystery. Join me, will you? Won't you? <laughs> she could start a true crime podcast based on all the shit that Schwartz has pulled. Hi, it's me, Music Kills Kate. Today's podcast is... Where did Schwartz go in fucking Mexico when he just disappeared for a night and then turned back the color gray? And then the music just goes. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a serial serial theme song, but with (laughs) instead of bling. (laughs) This episode is brought to you by mail. (laughs) (laughs) This is Katie, and I've been disrespected. Let's go back. September 22nd, 1999. The first time Schwartz said he would call me back and didn't. Where was he? I'm here at the Best Buy where I can prove to you that he literally did not buy the best thing here. 
<laughs> now here's a phone booth. I notice that Lala leaves out the part that it was 12 years ago, right? <laughs> so yeah. making it sound like, oh, you know, this just happened. Or it could have happened at your wedding, you know? She's just leaving it, leaving Katie's mind to run. So Lala's like, I don't think you were there because no one was really complaining about how annoying you are. And she's like, <laughs> well, I can't think of a time he was in Vegas with Sheena and I wasn't there. So, and Lala's like, well, you're going to have to ask him because I wasn't around at that time. She goes, well, did you ask Sheena? And she goes, no, I haven't seen Sheena. I wanted to talk to you first. And she tells us, I went back and forth. Like, should I talk to Sheena? But then I was like, I don't want to give Sheena a moment to make this okay. Well, yes. nice I'm doing heads thing- up, friend. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's very important for me to make sure that my best friends is totally blindsided on television. <laughs> <laughs> and also staring, st- sending the most terrifying person on the cast after them. You know what I mean? So, um, in her eyes and Sheena's eyes, you know, like that's the last thing Sheena wants is Katie on her ass again. It's like, God, no. can I have five minutes where Katie's not on my ass? Well, little so, did we realize at this point that Sheena has her own bombshell to drop later on. Oh, yes. That's the show, isn't it? So, so DJ James Kennedy, uh, he's like wicked, wicked, at Hotel wicked, Ziggy wicked. now. Everybody's talking about it, guys. Everyone at Hotel Ziggy's like, oh, since when did Southwest fly over this hotel? <laughs> I know. James is walking down the street. It's like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> whoa, that plane is flying really close to the building. I'm trying to play a set here. Do you have to follow me everywhere across this damn city? Damn city. Oh, <laughs> some ice just falls from the plane. I'm always imagining when the Southwest airline goes. <laughs> little over, peanut, little bag of peanuts. They're just like dropping. Because I don't know, like I have it. I don't think this is actually real, but I have it in my mind that planes, they release like the waste. <laughs> yeah, like, like little frozen cubes or something. Cubes of waste. And I think if they do do that, they don't do it over residential areas. But in my mind, they're always dropping it on James' head. Because Southwest mm. would do that. Just wait. Southwest has a taste in music. They're like, get him. Save it off <laughs> in like the a DJ. Bag of peanuts falls on his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now Schwartz and Joe are coming, and uh, Schwartz is like, your name is Joseph. Ha ha ha. That is hilarious. I call you Joseph. You want a shot, Joseph? She goes, um, <laughs> I don't even know why you asked me because we always drink the same thing. Wait, hold on. I can't see you. Hold on. Let me look. Oh, I can see you now. See. Oh my God. You're behind the hand bush. <laughs> Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. Inside is the my little pet Charlie. Oh my God, Charlie the turtle's back. Uh, he's in the church. <laughs> um. So Joe is really Joe this episode. By the way, she literally is doing our impersonation of her. I was like, I, that did not take a long time. She literally <laughs> does the thing where she's like, hmm. I'm like, she really does it. She does. Yeah. She's like, take a shot. Take a shot now. <laughs> do, 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 do. I think I'm so down. Take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing shots, and then um, Brock and uh, and Sheena's friend, Sheena and Brock and and Sheena's friend Madison stroll up, and Schwartz like, "Oh, Sheena, you got dressed up." Yeah, well, it's like very much like the vibe, like you know, like, and I wanted to get like a cute pic, you know, like here's like a my, my peace sign, peace, like Hotel Ziggy, like I'm totally hippie, but like reggae too. Huh, I don't know. Yeah, because it's me tonight because it's like mom's night out, so I'm like looking like this, like I'm looking really good at Hotel Ziggy, and also it's like I'm kind of drinking tonight because like I don't drink drink, you know, like I normally don't drink drink anymore. I'm like not sober, but I'm like sober sober. You know what I mean? Yeah, everybody's like, like trying to convince us that they're like not drinking for one episode is their shot at sobriety. Stop <laughs> trying to be sober. This is fucking Vanderpump rules, okay? Let the sober people live their best life and the rest of you stay messes. Yeah. Uh, did you notice that um her well, Tori was there with her? Tori was with Sheena's group. Um so and and really Tori, to- don't you have a baby to take care of? Yeah. You're supposed to have like a super newborn baby. Yeah, That's Tori. Yeah. Tori. I like she's baby, baby shaming Kyle people Chan. who don't even have babies. <laughs> I just like baby shaming nannies. What are you doing here without the baby? She's like, Does I have Jocelyn the baby. Does Jocelyn know that you left the baby? <laughs> Tori's like, I have the baby right here. And she like lifts up a little potted plant. <laughs> How dare you compare that? It's not a real baby. 
<laughs> okay. So, so Sandoval and yeah. Kyle Chan. Everyone loves a Kyle Chan cameo. And Ariana shows up. And um, Sandoval is talking with Brock. And he's like, oh, Ariana looks great. Like, that's a good dress for her. Like, I just... I just want to say something to her tonight. Like, I'm afraid to, though. Like, I'm afraid. I'm the victim here, man. It's oh, so God. hard for me. And Ariana looks amazing, by the way. Yeah. Holy She's crap. My God. So she is totally revenge dressing it. Love it. Which works. And Brock's like, oh, I feel like the first thing you guys should try to do is figure out how to start a conversation. It's like, you're Brock. Really? You were just yelling at your wife in a store the other day. I don't think you're the expert <laughs> on starting a conversation. All right, here's my, my method. When you're having trouble communicating, I say, all right, when you're holding the didgeridoo, you get to talk, all right? But unfortunately, you have to talk through the didgeridoo. So a lot of our conversations are like, wah, 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 get a babysitter, wah, wah, wah. It's the talking didgeridoo. Can't talk unless you got the didgeridoo. If you don't call it the didgeridoo, it's a didgeridoo. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> to be fair, it's also a question that Sheena asked me a lot. Did you do in the bathroom yet? <laughs> well, this is a weird summer. <laughs> One day she'll get it. You gotta believe as a parent. He's like, I know, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell my my, my poinsettia. <laughs> wah, 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 dude. <laughs> Okay, so then um, Schwartz and Joe go over and say, oh, Tom Sandoval's like, oh, dude, I'm getting ghosted left and right over here. You're not getting ghosted. Being ghosted is when someone just stops talking to you and doesn't explain why. They just leave. You've been called a piece of shit and told to go die. So. You're supposed to be the ghost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so It's not really the same. I mean, I guess it's been the same and like you've been figuratively murdered and turned into a ghost. But. <laughs> So Schwartz and Joe go over to say hi to James. There's like fist bumps, and James is like, "What's going on, Joe? Here to see the magnificence of DJ James Kennedy Hotel Ziggy. Oh, the pretzels this time. God damn it!" She's like, "Oh my God, Joseph, Joseph. They all call me Joseph. <laughs> I love DJing. <laughs> so letters from my favorite things: deals and jobs." <laughs> You can take advantage of deals when you have a job. <laughs> it's crazy how that works out. Wiki, wiki, wiki. <laughs> Do that thing with the records. Do that thing with the records. Sometimes Schwartz sounds like that when he's on my voicemail and, and he's got bad cell service. He's like, hey, Joe, it's me, Schwartz. <laughs> I'm like, are you a DJ? <laughs> are you a deal or a job? <laughs> Do they have breadsticks here? Unlimited. So then Sheena's watching. I'm a cat. <laughs> <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Whoop, 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 whoop. Like, I'm a cat that does dog impersonations. <laughs> so she does like, um, they're like totally dating. Like, why are they acting like they're not dating? Um, I love that everybody gets fucking energy from Joe. She's like, whoa, look at me right now. I'm a record. I'm a record. Hold on. <laughs> you spin me right round, 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 like a record. Could you imagine spinning around like a CD though? You go so fast. So Sheena's like, um, like right now, I really don't have a reason to like Joe. Like she literally drove with Raquel to go meet Tom's in Big Bear, and then she like left with Raquel with Sandoval at Big Bear. It's just like a little homie hang. Like, come on, bitch, you know. Okay, now here's my question: Who cares if Joe knew? If here and I know this is gonna people are gonna get on my ass about this because look, it's hard for me not to stick up for Joe because people on this show are so mean to her. I don't understand what she's done. Okay, so she knew that Tom and Raquel were fucking. Was she friends with these people? Was she friends with Ariana? Because from what we know from Raquel and everybody else, Tom is telling Tom was like, Oh, we have an open relationship. We're just together for the show, or we're just together because we have a brand, or whatever he was telling people. So did he tell Joe and they just she just bought that or I don't know. Well, obviously later on we find out that Joe went to Thanksgiving with Ariana. And so if she did know, that's incredibly shitty. Um, I don't know. The question is, I just don't know enough of the situation to know what Joe actually knows because I can see Joe going to like Big Bear and then saying, OK, Joe, you can go now. <laughs> OK, well, and she just like drives off. I, I thought know. we were going to see a big bear. What is this? It's a cabin. I can 
I can see why Ariana doesn't like Joe. I think that everyone else's oh, yeah. dislike of Joe feels tenuous. I, I just don't like I don't, I don't see why it's like they hate her. Like they hate her. They hate her. And I just don't understand why she is like engenders that kind of emotional response. I don't either. I mean, I understand the whole like, oh, you guys knew she knew she was dating shorts. But if she was dating, if you're dating somebody and their friend is cheating on their girlfriend and that they're told that they're in an, I mean, I don't know. I'm going in circles here and it's not like I'm trying to defend Joe or anything. I just, I think it's natural. And what the mistake that they're making on this show, the cast is making on this show, whenever you bully somebody on a show, it doesn't matter if you're right. Right. If you bully them, the audience is going to go on that person's side because they don't like to see that. And that's yeah. what these people are doing. And you're you're wasting a hero season with this, Katie. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Ariana has Ariana has, I feel like, more of a say because she was it's like, fuck right. this girl. She pretended to be my friend. She knew, you know, I get that. Right. But the whole like, I'm going to bully her and I don't care if she's if she's afraid of me. It's like, oh, God, here we go again. You know, the audience does not like that shit. Well, I think also, it's a huge it's a huge tactical error. Well, and also Katie did the whole thing of like, I don't care if you make out with people, whatever, just don't do it in the friend circle. And now she's mad that he, that she that Schwartz hooked up with Joe. I guess an argument could be made that she's in the friend circle. But I think I took it as like, don't do it with anyone on the show. And so, like, Katie just won't be happy with anyone that Schwartz makes out with, it seems like. But it seems like the thing that they're all mad at is that she knew she knew that Tom was cheating on Ariana, which I get why they would be like, fuck that girl. Um, my, especially Ariana, like you said. My question is, um, was Tom telling her, it's no big deal. I'm just dating, I just this. Think it's like I'm just dating this girl because we're in an open relationship and, and whatever, you know? Yeah, I feel like I would want to get more information to know what she really knew, et cetera. And also, I just feel like I just think that like it's not fair that Joe gets so much hate, but they're like pretty chill about Tom Schwartz these days. It's like it's I don't know. I just feel like this is what always happens. It's like the girl and Tom gets Sandoval. It so much worse. And Tom Sandoval. Sheena's like, Sheena's in the process of being friends with Tom Sandoval again, but she's going to hate this girl who wasn't even fucking Tom Sandoval. He was fucking Tom Sandoval's friend. Like, that's, it just seems a little bit she's ang yeah, she hypocritical like ang and unfair of them to be. And also, I don't like seeing Sheena and Ariana in this bully group because we've seen yeah. it happen a zillion times on this show, and they're usually the ones who it's against right mm -hmm. like katie and stassi and all those girls the witches of weho used to do it to the people that they didn't like and now that they're gone it's still going on but there's like new cast members in the bully group and i don't like that it's like people that i like in there now you know what i mean right. it's like sheena how many years were you fucking bullied by these people and now you're just jumping on the other team i don't like it yeah so, Whether or not um, this girl is right or wrong doesn't even matter at this point, Joe. We don't know shit about Joe except from what we've seen on this show and that she went to Big Bear with with those people. And I just don't think it's enough to burn somebody at the stake. Sorry, yeah. come and, and get me. I'm willing to burn Joe at the stake, but like we just need more evidence. I need to be ready to burn her at the stake. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need you to I tell just, me. Like, it, it, ha it has to be more than that Joe went to Big Bear and then left Big Bear and left Raquel at Big Bear and therefore like, could make a healthy inference that Raquel was sleeping with one of them. So yeah. uh, I just need more. Need more before I can hate. But for right now, I just see this as like a quirky weirdo girl who um, is like coming onto the show and <laughs> cannot handle it <laughs> at all. Here's what I see. A Muppet. A Muppet. Uh, she's just like that kind of a personality. She's just kind of a Muppet of a person. And I like her. She's just like a weirdo. Okay, maybe she'll prove me wrong later. She probably will because this is Vanderpump Rules. But for right now, there. We said it. So, <laughs> and now we said it. Well, we've said it every week, actually. But Yeah, so now Sheena does her version of bullying, which is basically um, – telling joe to take her hat off <laughs> she's like um you should like take your hat off like i'm like i'm gonna like fucking bully you like i'm literally saying i'm gonna bully you take the hat off you got braids on you got like really nice braids why don't you show your hat why don't you show your hat but joe's like embarrassed to show her braids for whatever reason and she was like no take your hat off take it off like you don't need to wear that fucking tom tom hat like we're good we're good we're good it's like uh, this is the only hat i could find oh my god i'm a record <laughs> Is it working? Well, She's still looking at me. <laughs> She's still looking at me. 
I can see the Tom Tom hat being triggering at this party for sure. It's like advertising. not the best like, choice. Not a good choice. Right. Like it's basically saying like I am Team Tom and Team Tom. So it's that like wearing there a team is a bad jersey. Choice. Right. And and here's the other thing, you know, just not to be too one sided. Joe is kind of a dipshit in this whole situation. She's wearing a Tom Tom hat, and then later her reaction is like, "I was attacked." I don't think she's being attacked, but I don't know. So then we see. Um, so Joe's like, I've gotten so much hate from these girls. It's 100% bully, and it's, like, horrible. It's not fun. And Sheena's talking to her friend, going, I mean, if you're a hairstylist, sell your, show your work. I mean, show your fucking hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, well, you're a singer, and I would appreciate it if you didn't try and sell your work. So, Listen. And also, I've known plenty of hairdressers who have shitty hair. I mean, isn't that natural? I mean, look at Jonathan Van Ness, right? Yeah. My weight he's got watchers. that big old, that giant beard and the long hair and everything. Yeah, and, he and looks then like a horse girl from the fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you don't have to live the art to do the art. Well, listen, my best Weight Watchers counselors have had pounder bags of peanut M&Ms in their glove box. You know what I mean? Like, look everyone at, doesn't live their job. Look at day. Kelly Catrone, okay? She work. She is all about Fashion Week, and what does she do? She walks around like in a black shirt all the time, and and like in some pants. You know, it's like yeah. Sometimes you don't have to. You can, you can express yourself in other ways, darling. Yeah, and so Madison's like, I mean, she has dope braids, right? Doesn't it look beautiful. She goes, Yeah, she has braids. Just, I mean, oh my God, you're always wearing a hat. Why are you always wearing a hat? Which is such an <laughs> odd way. <laughs> she odd does way like to go bully, like hat bullying is so strange. Take your hat off. Joe's like, no, I didn't have my hat on. So, um. Joe's like, oh my God, my hat's my armor. Take off my hat, take off my hat. They're coming from me. I'm melting. I'm melting. I'm melting. Ah, oh, my hat's back on him. <gasps> Thank God I'm still here. God, I was still here. I was like a candle near a flame there for a second. I'm still here. <laughs> so, um, Sheena, so Katie and Ariana join the girls. And she just like, so I'm having some like drinks tonight, so I like, can enjoy it because I might be the only time it happens tonight. <laughs> so, so Katie's like, why? Katie does no, in no mood to laugh along with Sheena tonight. Yeah, Katie hates Sheena, and it's so funny watching her try to be nice to Sheena because Katie cannot hide it. You know, she just does not have any fakeness about her, and she hates this fucking girl. And she's had to be nice to her ever since Scandaval, and it's just killing her. And she's like, Oh, Sheena, you don't drink often? Well, maybe because when you do, you make out with people's boyfriends. <laughs> maybe I wouldn't be drinking if I was her either. <laughs> <laughs> so now Sandoval's like hanging out with like Joe and Billy Lee and T and uh they're like the, the outcasts, you know? Yeah. And Sandoval's like, Hey T, I like your dress. She's like, Thanks. So then Joe's like, Hi Tom, <laughs> I like your face, kiddo. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I would pull my hat over my eyes, except I'm in Seoul. Oh, wait, no, it's there after all. Oh, whoops, I lose track of things. Just ask for Charlie the Turtle. Whoops. <laughs> He's like, thanks. Oh, I'll tell my Botox guy that you said you like my face. Like, oh, my God. Do you have a Botox guy that can freeze your personality in time? I just want you to be this Tom all the time. I love this Tom. <gasps> my God. I would wear this hat even if there was only one Tom because you wouldn't be enough for this world. Tom, Tom. <laughs> you know, if you wear this hat upside down, it says what, what? <laughs> So, my, my, what, what, except I guess what, like it what, wouldn't really, because the T would be upside down. So I guess it'd be more like saying like, would it be saying like Walge? Because it's like an L and a J together. <laughs> Walge, Walge. Uh, so, so Ariana yeah. is like, oh, is that Joe? Ugh, gross. And Lala's like, yes. I'm like that girl in elementary school who's like, where? Right there. <laughs> Squirting. Sorry, this just got really awkward. Yes, it's so, awkward. so then over on the chairs, Billy is tattletailing. And she's like, the girls behind you, every time they look over here, they're just like mean mugging at all. So they're like mean mugging. And literally I'm like, story, okay, Billy's drama. Left. But then we see that they literally are. Yeah, they're being, <laughs> they're, the girls are just looking over like, ah, gross, gross. <laughs> Because, like, Billy Lee's always mean mugging. So I'm like, shut up, Billy Lee. And then I look, then they cut to Ariana going, she's a rat girl. I'm like, okay, Billy Lee may have a point. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Lee's not always mean mugging. She's always shocked mugging. Like, oh my God, you're here? I'm like, you know, like when uh, someone's at your door 
and I mean, I have a glass front door, so sometimes they don't just ring the doorbell. It's just like a UPS guy standing there, and it scares ring me. It's happened multiple times where I'm just like, whoa, you're there? And I feel like that's how Billy Lee is. Like, oh, is that a mosquito <laughs> or a fly? So Joe is just covering. She's like literally pulling her hat down over her face. She goes, I don't know what to do. And Billy Lee's like, Joe, like, why are you plugging your ears? She's like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I can hear their eyes. I can hear their eyes. Take it all right out. And she's like, this past year, these things that these girls have said about me, they don't go away. Okay? They would insinuate that I was a crackhead. And that's like, that's like hurtful and harmful to anybody with ADD. Also not really nice to crackheads, which, you know, like there are people too. All right. Could you imagine being a crackhead and having ADD? Wow. So Sheena then um, brings all the girls over. By the way, I know it's not great to people who have ADD. Let me just say, being called a crackhead isn't great to anybody. (laughs) This is not to put it out there, okay? (laughs) Nobody nobody finds that to be a compliment, okay? Just if that makes you feel any better. This is a blanket, you know, like, we all hurt, you know. (laughs) Go ahead, sorry. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's rarely used in a complimentary way. It's not like, oh... This really hurts the ADD people more. Right. Um, oh, well, I guess may well, I'm not even going to I'm not even gonna Well it could because I get that they're a stereotype. I think I guess, I guess what I'm saying is like ADD I don't know that they hate you because of ADD. ADD. I don't think they're mocking you because of ADD. I think they're they're coming at you because of going to Big Bear with Yes. The boys or whatever. So um Schwartz like, Joseph, why are you plugging your ears? I saw you go like this. Ooh, why is everyone? Because I just I don't, I don't know. I don't want I don't I don't, I don't want eek. Ooh, ooh, ooh. When everyone was like eek, ooh, eek. They're like, oh, oh. <laughs> she's like, everybody, they're like looking over me and they're doing this like <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like going it's like walking through a car wash without a car. <laughs> <laughs> like you get to the end and it's just the time is 1203 <laughs> uh, i still have water droplets i still have water droplets i can't drop out of here i still have water droplets hey, Macarena. <laughs> do i have to tip the towel guy come on why will never why will nobody ever tell me how much do you tip a towel guy <laughs> So Joe's like, it's one thing to hear it on social media, but there's like another feeling when you can see five girls and you just kind of feel like they're just talking shit about me, about you. And she was like, I was like, oh my God, like, do you want to hear this about Joe? She's like, so wild. Like, why are you wearing that hat? Like, you're a hairstylist. You should probably like show off your work. And she's like wearing braids. And like, if you're like a hairdresser, like, why are you wearing a hat? Like, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> and even Lala's like, Jesus, Sheena. <laughs> I know. God, is this the hill you're gonna die on? Yeah, and so Joe's like, FM on in the car while it's in the car wash. I'm not in a car. Why is the FM on? <laughs> like, yeah, she's a freak. <laughs> and Billy Lee's like, Joe, what are you doing? Are you are you hearing FM in the car wash again? She's like, Oh my God, yes. And T goes, She's a drama free zone. Um, yeah, because because Joe has her fingers in her ears. I feel so bad for her. She looks so unequipped for this situation. Like, I'm like, oh my god, someone, this poor girl. So, um, then Allie is like, you know, I saw her last night, and I said, well, like, she's like, didn't like my straight up question where I was like, are you fucking Schwartz? So I was like, well, do you find him physically attractive? And she said yes. So like. Well, do you have feelings for him? And she's like, yes, like my dad. Like, ha, ha, ha. Right, I'm guys? Like, oh, my God, like my dad. I'm sure that's especially hilarious to Lala. It's like, you know, married Rand or whatever. And um, I know I'm not saying anything about Lala's father. I just mean like daddy, daddy mm-hmm. types. You know what I mean? So then uh, Ariana's like, oh, my God, does she fuck her dad? And they're like, no. And I was like, I can't go there. I can't go there. This is so awkward. Oh, God. Anybody have paper towels? Like, seriously. <laughs> and Allie's like, honestly, like, she's trying to come in peace. She has, like, this energy where she's like, and Katie's like, she's a psychopath. Come on. <laughs> Ariana's like, girl, that was me a year ago. And she, and Ariana's like, um, before anybody starts boo-hooing over how Joe is treated by any one of us, know that Joe is a full-blown mean girl bully. 
who did not give a flying fuck about spending Thanksgiving with me in my home while knowing that our mutual friend was fucking my boyfriend in my house, and it is not bullying for me to point that out. So I just need to know what was the bullying that Joe did? It was it just coming to Thanksgiving while knowing that Tom was banging somebody? I guess I don't know if that counts as bullying. It just counts as um, definitely not being cool, being shitty. Being yeah, shitty. again, like I, Ariana's a scorned one, so I kind of I, I still don't like this. I'm sorry, it's a bad. I look. feel bad for Joe. I mean, Ariana, obviously, it's well established. We feel bad for Ariana and what she had to go through with all this bullshit. But I feel bad for Joe in this situation because I think just Joe doesn't seem to like, I don't know. I don't want to make excuses for her if, you know, because if she was she being didn't shitty, cheat. she was being shitty. There, she doesn't need like, that many excuses. She did not cheat. She was not the one Tom was fucking. Any of that. I mean, keep it on Tom. You know what I mean? Like, if you guys yeah. are going to be mean girl bullies, do it to Tom. He's standing right there. He's yeah. standing literally right there. So Allie's like, yeah, I met her like once or twice. Like, so I totally like believe you guys. I just want her to know like she can come to events and we're like not going to like bully her. Right, Katie? Katie's <laughs> yeah, Katie's like, no, I don't want her to feel like she can come anywhere. <laughs> and so Joe rushes past them crying. And um, Katie's like, yeah, I don't want her to feel comfortable, period. And if she's uncomfortable, then I'm thrilled. And you know what, Joe? Thank you, because you gave Katie... Katie's getting two huge gifts in this episode. One, she gets to bully a girl. <laughs> Katie <laughs> loves to bully a girl. That's always what's made me crazy about her. And here she is, back in full force. Yep. Whether they deserve it or not, by the way, this is her favorite fucking thing to do. And the other thing she gets in this episode is she gets to be a big, huge victim about something. So this is like a great episode for her. She's huge. winning this one. So now uh, Schwartz is like, Joe, where are you going? Where are you going, Joe? And she's like, I just, I don't like being attacked. I want to go home. I want to go home. So Brock is like, he's like uh, watching this. He's not happy. And so she, is the attack, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is the attack that the girls, she, she could just see the girls all looking at her and talking about her and being mean. <laughs> Maybe she could read the lips when Ariana said she's a rat girl. <laughs> so... She's like, where's Joe? And Brock's like, oh, let's relax on the ways, Joe. She's crawling in the corner trying to find some free spaghetti. Let's relax one second. And then then Allie, like, puts her cup on, like, the table near James's video equipment. He's like, Allie, belly. No, not, you can't put it there. I can't put it there. And then he, like, she's like, oh, sorry. She's Naughty, naughty. <laughs> See, I wasn't yelling at my girlfriend. We're very happy. It was just playful banter. Naughty, naughty, Ali Bally. Don't ever put it near that. Ali Bally, naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty. You'll be in culottes for a week if you try that again. Mariah. <laughs> right. Hope you enjoy a pleather kiplet because that's your punishment. So Lotla and Katie are talking um, to Ariana about Schwartz admitting to kissing Sheena. And Katie's like, I'm going to confront her. So then Sheena is at the bar. She's like, oh, my God. I'm, like, drinking tonight for, like, the first time ever. Well, not ever, but, like, sometimes I have, like, a drink. But that doesn't count because it's, like, drink, drink. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, like, different than a drink. So, like, I'm not, like, an alcohol. I'm, like, a, I'm like a drink, drink, but only tonight, if that makes any sense. I'm basically sober. It's hard. It's really hard, you guys. Hey, do you have any chips? <sighs> Yeah, I'm going to be doing, like, a live broadcast of shenanigans where I talk about what it's like to be, like, drinking for the first time in forever because, like, I'm a mom. So, like, I'm just like, hello, welcome to the episode. <laughs> Exclusive content on my Patreon. So, um, Ariana and Katie are still talking about the Sheena making out with Schwartz thing. And Ariana's like, well, I made out with Sheena in Vegas. Was it at the same time? And Katie's like, I don't know. And I don't want to bring it up because, like, I don't want to be like, yo, bitch, what the fuck? But, like... It also is like, yo, bitch, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And Lala Lala says, yeah, but he said they were joking about, like, during the holidays this year. And I was like, whoa, I don't like that at all. They were joking about it. They were talking about it. Some joking about it. I mean, it's not, like, to do it is one thing, but to joke about it on the holidays? That's that's a lot. <laughs> I have a baby. So. A baby. So I'm about to squirt all over this hotel. I'm sorry. I'm nervous. <laughs> so Ariana's like, Ariana's like, so is this like an inside joke between the two of you or something? And Law's like, it feels gross. And Katie goes, see, that part bothers me. Like, have you guys joked about doing this before? Like, that's just like so disrespectful. <laughs> and then Sandoval walks over. He's like, hey, uh, guys, uh, sorry to interrupt. I just want to show off. I put on this cool jacket that has the back totally cut out 
I don't know if you've seen this. Did you see his jacket? It was like a blazer, but the back was like a window to like below the blazer. It was so weird. Um, Such a yeah. weird person. He's just struggling so hard, you know. Trying to be fashion forward. Yeah, He's just like, trying to be something, you know. Um, Ariana, I um, I, d- I don't, I don't, I, d- I, d- I don't want to bother you, but like, I just want to make sure you got the email that I sent earlier, like, um, a month ago, and 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 and. and she and... is like Gloria Swanson coming down a staircase, <laughs> looking at him. She's like, <laughs> she is. She's like, mm. the. I am so impressed because if there's someone that I can't stand and they try to talk to me, I that my dream is to do what Ariana did, just give like the. <laughs> evilest face but instead i'm like oh hi yeah no it's fine everything's fine that's totally cool yeah i'll I'll, I'll check i'll check in that email (laughs) oh my god i've just been really backed up in my email so i'll get to that it's totally fine she's like my lawyer has it and he's like um just so you uh uh i am nervous look everybody i'm being bullied um just so you know we need to get things going you know so if you could like have him respond and she's like <sighs> she just turns away now <laughs> she just yeah. looks away and he's just talking to her cheekbone um yeah so like the law's like what's this about and sam was like oh it's like the house like yeah like just you know like whatever like let me know like because um all right well i'm gonna uh i'm gonna leave you guys alone it's a little drafting here uh because i don't have a back to my blazer so my uh, so then she's like, you know, Lala's, of course, got her opinion, which is, it's taking Ariana a long time to rid herself of this house. Like, bitch, you've got so many brand deals. Get an apartment. Why should she? Why should she move out of the she's fucking wide. house? That's her house. That is her house. He and should get a fucking apartment. Sandoval had the affair. He moves out. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So Katie is uh, Sheena's like I'm twerking. That's what like drunk people do. No, it's like drunk tonight. Just like temporary drunk. So it's just like, like temporary take this twerking. all in. Take this all in because I like I so rarely drunk twerk. So like what you guys are getting is like really a special thing. So they go to the bar. They're gonna talk or whatever. And then uh, Sandoval is flirting with T, and he's like, "Well, yeah, I was like." Uh, I, the other night I was like, I'm like at a pool by the sky bar, you know, you know what that's like. I was, I was like, I'm cold, and I was like, oh, you've got a jacket. Why are you still cold? <laughs> yeah, so, so I was saying, <laughs> had a girlfriend one time. Now she's my roommate. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like really hard going on dates because you have to like talk to people. It's like weird. I haven't like done this in a while. And then we see a very quick timeline of how he's basically been in a relationship since 2008. Kristen, Ariana, Raquel. So he's like, oh, maybe it's time to like rip off that band aid and like go on some first dates, you know, man. I'm just like, I'm the victim here, man. So then Katie uh, talks to Sheena and then she's like, um, I don't know how to bring this up because it was like brought up to me in such an abrupt way. I mean, Sheena, the fathoms that are missing <laughs> from my fathom bag, <laughs> I can't even. Some might look into that fathom bag and say, this is fathomless. <laughs> Doesn't it feel good to fathom less? So anyway. Ariana's like, Sheena, you in danger, girl. (laughs) You in danger, girl. (laughs) So apparently Lala had juice with Schwartz, (laughs) which is a great sentence. And she was talking to him about Sandoval and how he's like so over talking about everything. And he was like, yeah, I've like done this. I've, like, done this. I, like, made out with Sheena in Las Vegas. Um, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. He said you were in Vegas. Okay, like, what happened was that, like, me and Ariana were there with my mom and my sister for her cheer competition and, like, fucking high school. So Are you trying to put me asleep before you answer the question? Because okay. seriously, I had just gone to the M M&M and M store and I just got a bunch fathoms. of M Ms that said Sheena Sheena's, and like I was like, this is a great trip. It's like the best trip we've ever had in like forever. And then like we went to like Cheesecake Factory, and I got like something like that brown bread, which is like so delicious. And then afterwards, there was like that little statue of the like, man sitting on the side, and I was like, let me take a photo with it because it looks like I'm taking a photo with the man, but he's actually a statue, so it was like really fun. And then like all of a sudden, like the sky turned like red, and like it was like blue, and it's like it turns out we were like they were doing like a show in the middle of the ball because we we're in Caesars. It was just like so fun. So what we're talking about again, Kitty? But why would he say, like, we made out if you guys didn't, like, make out? Oh, 
Um, well, we didn't. Like, nope, nope, nope. We absolutely did not. Like, because, like, that was, like, not a make out. Like, no, no, no. Like, can I tell you what was, like, making out with that? You know who I was making out with on that trip? You know who I was making out with? A yard of margarita. I, like, I was just slurping that thing up. Also, Ariana. And she was like, oh, my God. I just wanted to pretend that never happened. I mean, my God. I never told my best friends. I never told Aunt D. I never told any enchiladas. I never told the crop top. <laughs> I mean, also, I would never have told Katie, especially back then. Because, I mean, she's scary. The bitch is scary. Yeah, this is when Katie, like, oh, my God. This is, like, a time where Katie was such a fucking monster to Sheena. I can't even. I'm like, She's like, how could you not come to me about? Because you're terrifying. You're still terrifying. Why do you think she wouldn't come to you? Yeah. Also, the way that she tells the story is that they were partying in Vegas and then Tom pulls her aside and tries to kiss her, which isn't really the same as her making out with Schwartz, right? Right. It's not. And the thing is also that, like, um, yeah, Katie, when Katie is not in, like, good standing with Sheena or vice versa, versa, I should say, Katie is so mean to Sheena. So then, of course, Sheena's not going to say that. Like, Katie doesn't, Sheena doesn't want to, like, deal with the wrath of Katie. And then when they're good, Sheena doesn't want to go back to the wrath. So, of course, Sheena's not going to bring it up, especially if it's not something that, like, there's no upside to saying it. It was 12 years ago. You hated her guts when it happened. The only time you were friends with her was when you got dumped by Stassi. And you were the only person left on the show. That was, like, the season where Katie was nice to everybody. Remember? It was so weird. And, then, and don't forget, also, remember in the in the early years of Vanderpump Rules, Sheena was known as the mistress of the group, and she probably didn't want to add fuel to that fire. Right. They were all calling her whore and mistress and all of this stuff. And so uh, when Katie was alone on the show, Sheena befriended Katie. She didn't have to do that. She could have just let Katie rot and have nobody to shoot with and get kicked off the show like anybody, any other reality star would have done. But she befriended Katie, and then the second Katie got, Sheen, uh, got Stassi back, she totally turned on Sheena and started bullying her immediately, like um, five minutes later. So she didn't owe you shit, okay? Yeah. Give me a fucking never... break. She did. There was no upside. And once again, by the way, this is another example of a shitty guy on Bravo Getting outing that, yeah. a stupid indiscretion. And then he gets to smile and be like, oops. And then the girl is the one who has to take the heat. Like, look at fucking Southern Charm last season. Austin... Like Austin makes Taylor keep the secret about their makeout, and then, or he he doesn't make her, but he like guilts her into it, and then he's the one who outs it, and then she looks like the sh- the shadiest one. I mean, she was shady, but yeah. like, it's always the it's always the guy who just is like, ha 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 ha, this happened, and then the girl is the one who gets all the wrath. Yep, every single time, and Schwartz is obviously doing this just to ruffle Katie. He's doing it obviously just to piss Katie off and to break up Sheena and Katie from being a united front. And it's worked, you know? Yeah. So anyway, Sheena's like, why would I bring this up to blow up our relationship? And Katie's like, but now, like, it's a joke. Like, it's funny now. She's like, I'm not making fun of it. And she goes, yeah, but... Like he said, he said you guys were joking about it over the holidays. Over the holidays. Lala has a baby. (laughs) <laughs> um i may have made a comment like oh well yeah you're a makeout whore like you tried it with me once yeah but i'm looking at at the course now like at the course of our like friendship and you've been like a bridesmaid at my wedding even though i didn't really want you to be a bridesmaid and like it never came up <laughs> at I, all. Fought, I fought actively for you not to be didn't but... she didn't didn't she like not want Gina to be a bridesmaid of course I, I don't know. She's like, I would assume that, like, with Tom, like, okay, he's fully made out of, like, a mi- like with a million girls, and I was, like, a broken person. Like, I was, like, a shell. Like, my self-confidence, my self-worth was, like, next to nothing. Yeah. You know why? Because Schwartz fucking sucks. That's why. And that's another thing. We've always been on the side of Katie being way above Schwartz. Schwartz has way always been above. a piece of shit fucking emotional abuser to Katie. So I want to make sure we keep those two things clear two people can be assholes here but we've always thought here that katie is way above that fucking guy and i'm so glad she got away from that fucking loser and this is just another example why and it's not because he made up with sheena for 12 years or 12 years ago it's that he's using it now just to get under your skin because you're too fucking happy for one single week you know so right. Sheena's like, well, why would I have brought it up? Because, like, um, I knew that he had already done a number and he was shitting on your relationship. And I'm like, why would I hurt you more? And be like, yeah, he did that with me, too. And Katie's like, because. She goes, no, because I wanted you to work out, Katie, okay? Like, I wanted you to work out with Schwartz. It's, like, a really important to me. It's like a person who only drinks every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, but 
you can't act like you want it to work out, but then withhold the fact that her like future husband is like making out with like her, right? Like, or trying to make out like that's, that's actually when you say you have to get out of this relationship. So she does not totally in the clear here either. So Katie is like, yeah, you have to, but you have, <laughs> but you being someone that was also part of that whole narrative, some might say convenient narrative and being part of our wedding. That's like, that's like almost Joe levels of awfulness. So Katie's like, yeah, but has I anyone expected this. said 12 years ago yet? That's the thing. <laughs> like, does Katie even know it was 12 years ago? I guess Sheena d- did kind of because she's like, my sister was at a cheer competition in Vegas. So I don't the know. It was so one... long ago. And you can't act like you married Schwartz not knowing that he was a piece of shit. You knew he was a cheating piece of shit. And I'm not saying that that justifies him being a cheating piece of shit. But it's not like had Sheena told you she that he tried to make out with her when they were wasted and partying in Vegas one time that you wouldn't have married Tom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was one little bead on a long story shitty string of beads <laughs> i think i don't know why i'm making anal beads, beads but i think uh brock is the only one who's like oh this is like 10 years ago everyone come on now yeah. so because he does that later so anyway let's move on to the next day so now lala and james meet with schwartz this is a long ass episode by the way i'm just like realizing there was still so much left in this episode is it it feels almost over it feels no, like that was we have like... to, we have the lunch, and then we also are gonna have a breathing exercise, and then we have oh, a, <laughs> this is a big one. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay. Okay, do we I'm need to like, take a break? We can do this. I'm like, I have this to. This is gonna really be badly. our lameness. Okay, we can <laughs> I do have to this so badly. It'll be like the old days, a nice three hour sesh. Oh my goodness! So now it's the next day. Out uh, this podcast, by the way, we've been recording for 24 hours. <laughs> like <laughs> to the listeners, it's now <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> oh, a new episode of Vanderpump it is kind of a is about to start. <laughs> a new season is starting. Oh my god, they recast half of Vanderpump by the time the recap ends. <laughs> so uh, the next day, Lala and James meet uh, with Schwartz to talk about last night. And um, I love, so then they talk about, you know, six hours earlier, Schwartz having lunch with Joe and how Joe was basically hurt by all the girls and had an anxiety attack. And um, Joe's just saying at their lunch, she's like, I was just scared. You know what I mean? I mean, all I heard was, Kah! he's like, oh no, it was the FM inside the car wash, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Hold on. You still got water droplets on you. Let me wipe those away. She's like, oh my God. In love again. <laughs> 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 I'm still laughing at the concept of FM in the car wash. <laughs> Is she hearing Delilah or something? No, don't you remember when you go through the car wash and you were playing the radio? How the car wash, sh- the radio would just be like. <laughs> oh yeah, my dad would always bang on the car, the uh, the uh, bang on it, being like, "Why isn't it working?" Because you're in the car wash. But he just kept hitting it, thinking, <laughs> "Surely, if I just hit it enough." It'll come back to life. Oh, dads. You're like, dad, stop banging the stop banging the radio and pay attention to this wonderful show. <laughs> as the, you know, everything Truly. swivels. I love the car wash. Although there was I a period do. of time in my do. life as a kid when I was terrified of it. It was so scary. But then all of a sudden you realize it's actually the most fabulous thing you could do. It's just like a bunch of dancers. Like yeah, because kids are pussies. Yeah. So are plants. I'll tell you one thing. My plant never complained in the car wash. Exactly the same. as My, my ficus was scared in the car wash once. <laughs> So um, that's the only plant I know. If you noticed a ficus, <laughs> I know you're really leaning into ficus. There's a, what about a spider plant, Ronnie? So Schwartz is like, yeah, Joe is fine. She's fine. And Lala's like, and when you see her, do you like kiss her? <laughs> Squirt. And Schwartz is like, no, no, no. Like kind of like when we hang out, but it's not like that. Except, you know, we we just haven't had sex, you know. So which wait, is a lie. Talk? What we haven't had sex? I thought he made a joke. I don't know. I don't, I don't get know. It. Maybe I wrote that Doesn't down matter. wrong. So Lala's like, um, you know what? It's like that's very different, actually. And he goes, yeah, yeah. I mean, huh, huh, right? Oh no, no. He's he's talking to Lala. He's saying, he's saying, no. It's like when we hang out, Lala. Except oh. me and you haven't had sex. Sorry, that oh, came back to me. That means I read it wrong. That was my bad. I apologize. <laughs> oh, wait to a minute. Greater what Bravo happened community. here? Um. So they're talking about that, and Lala's like, is Sandoval coming? <laughs> Because, you know, uh, if he is coming, so I just want to look good in case a paparazzi takes photos. And Schwartz is like, yeah, he said he was going to pop in, but who knows? He's on, he's on Sandoval time. Oh. 
So I love that Tom's having this whole season of like, look at what a different person I am and still fucking constantly shows up late to every single thing. That is yeah. so rude and a fuck you to everybody around you. I can't. So Lala's like, oh my God, look at you, Sandoval. The energy seems good. You happy? Have a good day? What about that? And he's like, yeah, good day. I like your nails. Can I borrow them? She's like, thank mm. you. I'm just so used to coming with your head hanging low and being all sad. Look at you now. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I know. It's like I got neutered. And then James is like, it's like someone woke up on the sunny side of the bed this morning. You know, I woke up on the sunny side of the bed this morning and then a can of, aha, watermelon sparkling water fell on my head right from that stupid southwest end. I stopped throwing your trash at my head. <laughs> so then we get Sandoval's newest load of shit. Well, I've been running around because we had some AC issues. So I had to go to the main bedroom and like close some vents. And then the door got left open. Somehow, it just got left open for someone. I mean, I wasn't there. It wasn't yeah, the necessary. We can't prove open. it was me that left the door open. But then Maya went in there and like ate some stuff, like some weird stuff. So we've had some problems with that. So that was rough. And Gerard says, like, yeah, she does that. Did you ever tell you about the time that she ate 500 lacrative pills? Or is it 50? I'm a little boy. And Sandoval's like, it was like 500. And she, like, eats, like, pillows and hair coloring. And, on and like, she, like, shits on top of the couch. I'm like, well, maybe Maya's eating the laxatives because she's like, damn, this pillow, I am not digesting it very well. <laughs> like, it's, it's, she's trying to solve her own problems. Her. It's called self-care because you're not yeah. fucking helping. Yeah. So then uh, he's like, Maya, like, she often gets into things like laxatives. And Ariana's upset with me, but, like, it's clearly an accident. Clearly. God, shut the fuck up. You can't even take accountability of the fact that, like, you let Maya have access to food that she can't eat. Like, like she's, like, it's, she's mad at me, but it's, like, an accident, man. You're supposed to say, I'm so sorry. This was totally my fault. It's my bad. I'm, I was very irresponsible. It won't happen again. Not like it was obviously an accident. So why are you like mad at me? When Ariana's story, Jody. Anna, Ariana's story, which we get in a little while, is that he locked the dog in the room. Like she was gone <laughs> and that. he put the dog in there. He didn't just leave the door open. He put the dog in there and closed the door because he was. And you know when you've done that. Like you, I think you'd know when there's a dog stuck in a room. <laughs> right. I would imagine. Yeah. But also, why was your takeout from last night still on the counter in your bedroom? Well, that's a whole other. A, <laughs> you guys, There's seriously, you do need Anne to clean up your shit because that's crazy yeah. too. Yeah, there should not have been a takeout container. Don't of you feel Thai like a food. fucking parent sometimes doing this show? We we joke about how we're not parents, <laughs> but then listen to us. We're like, but then your takeout was left out, Missy. I'm like, it's like we do have children. They're on television. They're on TV. <laughs> Yeah. That's why we never had to have children because we're always bossing these people around who can't even hear us, you know. So, uh, I mean, I guess they could. I wouldn't recommend so, it. Sandoval's like, you know, I'm like trying to move forward and like take action, like make it super easy for her to like move out, you know. And Lala's like, yeah. And I know how it feels to have someone hold you hostage for your past or their version of it. He's like, yeah. Oh, and please. It's just been like humbling. What, what? what does this well, have to do with you? What well, in no, the what, world? Well, what's funny is that like that comment is, I believe, 75% targeted at Sandoval because Sandoval was the one who held her hostage for her past. And he just does not even realize it. Oh, OK. God, I'm right? misunderstanding everything Lala says in this scene. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, no, no. It was good. I mean, good I don't you. know if she meant it that way, but it could apply to him. And he doesn't even have the moment to say like, oh, yeah, that's what I was doing to you. Oh, yeah. I didn't get it either. So he's like, it's been humbling. Like, I've been doing guided meditation and trying to just, like, explore other ways to handle anxiety and anger. Uh, maybe you should try meditation that's like, take better care of pets. How about that? <laughs> and maybe yeah. it's some meditation that's like, you don't deserve this house. You don't deserve <laughs> yeah. this house. You aren't automatically born with a right to a house that also you took fucking loans out on. When someone else was part owner of this. Anyway. Dude, it was like an accident. Like, why are you mad at me? It was like clearly an accident. I'm doing guided meditation. He's like, you want to come over for breath work? And she's like, no. I don't want to hold you to your past in any way, shape, or form. I just I just don't know what I can participate in right now, Tom's. And I don't want to make a mockery of the work that you're doing. So maybe I'll sleep on it and come after you do breath work. I just... Want to be in a place where you're not purposely breathing because that would be harmful to my friend Ariana. But maybe if it's a place where you just happen to be breathing, that's better. Here's what I want to do. I want to walk in while you're doing something really embarrassing and I can like laugh about it. Okay. 
So uh, now it's time, the next day, it's time for Sandoval's guided meditation, which there was a part of me that thought when he said he does guided meditation, it meant like a guy did meditation. <laughs> like that's all he meant by it. So um, this guy, Sandoval's lying there on like a mat and he's got headphones on. The, the, I guess there's probably some music or some sensory deprivation, whatever, going on through his ears. But this guy, Dr. Vu, is speaking to him through a microphone. And he's like, okay, three, two, one, in, in, out. And Sandoval's like, right now, okay, we're revving I your just, engine. Uh, we're revving your engine. I. I want you to see yourself as a race car that sings on key. This is a C. Ah, uh, give me a C. Ah, uh, that is not a C. Uh, do a C. You can do it, Tom. You can do it. Now, these next few minutes is going to set the tone for this entire session. In. Out. Dude. Dude. In. Dude. Dude. Out. Wasn't my fault. Wasn't my fault. It's clearly an accident, man. Oh. <laughs> we need to conquer the tough challenges. It's my house. <laughs> Let go of all the resentment you feel. You in danger, girl. <laughs> there you go. Oh, Let you it flow. <laughs> Don't win latte. Let it go. Playing a Duval fashion icon. Let's reflect on your inner world. Remember the universe always prioritizes our growth over our comfort. White nail polish, dude. <laughs> Buzz buttons. Now, one big exhale. We're gonna let it feel through your whole body. Ah, 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 Sandoval, Sandoval thing that Sandoval's ever Sandoval. Scream! <laughs> I'm like trying to control myself. I'm like in an apartment now. I'm, I'm trying to not get thrown out of this place. But whoa, like Sandoval doing his just even his little breath work was. Like, <laughs> I was like, are there any of those laxatives left? Did Maya take all of them? Because you sound like you need one. He's just like. Ooh. Sounds like he's grabbing onto the just lid, you know, the the seat of the pot, just like grabbing onto it. <laughs> it did not sound like breath work. It definitely sounded like constipation work. It was. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I think I was making these noises last week, but the difference was I was preparing for a colonoscopy. <laughs> you did actually take a medication. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. So Dr. Vu is like, oh, I think you have a friend here now that we're done. And he's like, yeah, oh, well, what's up, Lala? And she's like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> just, I hate to say it, just squirt it. This is so <laughs> awkward. What the fuck are you doing? Lala walks in in the middle of this and is like, what the hell? And I love how Sandoval goes from this, like, scream cry to then be like, oh, hey, Lala, what's going on? That's really cool, man. You want to do it? Yeah, she's like, mm, no. So I'm not gonna do this. It seemed really great, and I know that like you wanted us to all do this together, but I have a little bit of dignity left, and I'm not gonna do this on national TV. So thanks, yeah. but no thanks. I'm gonna keep the remainder of my dignity. <laughs> Thank you. I'm basically an orca. So, <laughs> um, so she's like, you know, it seemed really great, and I know you wanted us to do it together, but like. I'm amazed with you. And we should, you know, we all reserve the right to evolve. And Except fuck for what Joe's. anyone else says. <laughs> Except, for, Except for Joe. Except for Joe. She can't evolve. And Katie later, who I also turn on in about five minutes. So, yeah. and Ariana <laughs> as well. But, you know, fuck what anyone else says, you know? And let's just say he is bullshitting us all. Like, I don't have to sleep with him. He sleeps with himself, you know? And I sleep pretty nice at nights. Yeah. You know what, what happened last year, Tums, was like the cherry on top of the squirt. And I feel like for a very long time, 
I have really, really tried this, okay? And I've texted you to tell you I was proud of you at the, at the bar, and I would never get responses. And when my life went south, not once did you ask me how I was doing, because as you may, may remember, I was in a marriage with Rand, and then he cheated on me, and then it would have become a huge nationwide scandal, but then, like, your scandal took over, so I think maybe now would be a good time for me to start my scandal back up again. So what I'm trying to say is this is Lala Ball right now, and so scandal Lala, I don't know, whatever you want to say it, so like um are you paying it did you fall asleep on me tom he's did like well um i uh i apologize but i didn't feel it was appropriate for me to contact with you uh, there was a disconnect in other words we hated each other why are you fucking acting like i would call you during your we hated each other's fucking guts okay and you sent me one text one time that said congrats on your restaurant like <laughs> what yeah. is that supposed to do <laughs> but um She's. I like that she's like, listen, it wasn't Scandaval. I hated your ass before Scandaval. <laughs> so let's stop pretending like I just need to forgive you for Scandaval. You're an asshole. I hate your guts. I've always hated your guts. So tell me why we're supposed to be friends again. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like, you know, what, what happened in my life, like, really, really fucked me up. And if you want to join me on this storyline, I really would like, I, I would like you to join me because I'm not getting any traction with it. I'm just like really trying to remind America that I also have a scandal and <laughs> it would be nice if I could get maybe at least an episode. <laughs> I don't need okay. to be on Dancing with the Stars, but could I just maybe be on Dance Moms or something? Can I just like get anything, anything? Come on. I mean, shit, I'd do Mass Singer. I don't care. Oh, did that one. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it. I'll just wear masks. I don't know. What do you, whatever, whatever America needs from me. <laughs> um, this is Sheena, just in the parking lot. I just wanted to say I'm really upset that you did Mass Singer and didn't even tell me. Ah! <laughs> do you mean to do, like, that Storage Wars? I'll open up some storage, storage places. Wars. Did it. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm going through a lot. Just, yeah, well, thank you. I just want to, like... I just want positivity right now, and I just like want to be positive like to other people, and I don't want to like walk in a room and people be like, "Oh, I don't want that." Like, but the way things have been like worked out in my life, I do feel like this was actually supposed to happen, and like maybe like what you went through obviously was maybe supposed to happen. What did you go through again, by the way? I don't really <laughs> remember. Did the Range Rover break down? What are we What are we talking about? You got here? new hoop earrings or something? <laughs> She's like, "Oh my God." I've been held prisoner by my experience for way too long. You and what you did, that's not my fights. But you know what? This is what I want. I feel good about this. And I did feel good about coming here and having this conversation with you and letting you know. And he's like, oh, my God, I appreciate your vulnerability. She's like, yeah, I'm vulnerable. Traumatized. He's like, trauma, vulnerable. She's like, yeah, lifeblood. He's like, meditation guided. They're like, yes, we're friends now. What the fuck are yeah. these two up to? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So now we have a sandwich taste thing. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, trying to gaslight me into thinking you have a sandwich shop? What is happening on this show? I know you don't. <laughs> you have it in the opening. I saw a girl on TikTok go there. You do not have it. No, I'm rooting for you to have it. I'll go there when you have it. Don't make me watch a scene. I'm with Lala on this one. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? I have to pee so badly, and there's a sandwich scene. So Ariana and Katie are explaining. <laughs> Do you want to, why don't you go pee? I mean, I think I have to pee. I think I have okay. to pee in the middle of this recap. Go do it. It's Everybody, we will, we will come back with the next part of this uh, video in just a minute. Just come back. We'll be back. Okay. It's, it's a 19-hour recap. What are you going to do? <laughs> I'll pee, so too, sorry, in solidarity. I'm sorry. Okay, here we are. We're back. We're back. Thank you. Thank you for letting me... Um, use the bathroom because we were this <laughs> recap was going so long and we still had so much show left i was like i have to pee i have you to do pee. what you gotta do baby. <laughs> first ever i think this is the first ever time we have stopped the podcast <laughs> so one of us could pee so very exciting very exciting <laughs> indeed yeah great time it's a lot to do a lot to cover on this episode okay yeah. So um here we are we are doing this sandwich shop thing again i'm it's not really understanding why. And I'm with Lala. Lala's like, why are we doing this again? Didn't we do this last summer? The Suprasada had it last summer. Can we please just fast forward through this just a little bit? I have yeah. a baby. But now the here's looking at you inside has, it's, you know, there's like stuff on the walls. There's like, it's like trellises almost. Um, and uh, not trellis, not a trellis. It's like a, 
Yeah. Is it a trellis? Are those trellises like? The... I think so. The, the gazebos are. <laughs> the gazebos no, are. It's, the stuff um, that plants grow up. Yeah, I thought trellises like goes overhead. The one on the side is called. Uh, Oh, it's going to kill me. I don't know. It's very girly, you know, like, because it's something about her. It's like a sandwich shop for girls in LA where girls don't eat sandwiches. I'm just saying yeah, it's not it the best trellis. business plan. It's an awkward business plan because girls ain't eating that. I'll tell you Listen, that right now. I love a sandwich shop. But what's weird is that this is like a sandwich shop and it's like girly and the sandwiches come out on like a afternoon tea kind of tiered thing and everything. Um, and uh, I don't know. I Listen. As long, if the sandwiches are good, I will be ordering from it because I, I literally, I, I feel like there are not enough sandwich shops in Los Angeles and I, I want more and more and more of them. The sandwich shops in Los Angeles, I mean, other than the chains, you've, well, this is a chain, but like Fat Sal's, I mean, they're so ridiculous because people <laughs> don't eat sandwiches. Like it's, it's Can a I... culture without bread. Okay. And it's not just girls. It's LA. It's a culture without bread. So when they do have sandwiches, they're like, come here and be the biggest fucking slob you can. And they may, they put as many fucking calories as they can. So when you go there, you feel like Jabba the Hutt eating, a, eating your fucking, nor you can't have a sandwich. It's like chicken, but with fettuccine sauce and French fries with cheese. <laughs> deep fried in a burrito shell like what the fuck dude can i okay let me tell you something about um fat sal's okay i went there recently and they used to they used to have a sandwich at fat sal's called the heavenly ham and swiss and it was ham swiss coleslaw russian dressing a very classic sandwich and recently they've taken it off their menu but it still kind of like lives in their system so you could sort of order it off menu so i went in there and i was like Hey, can I get the um, Heavenly Ham and Swiss? I know it's not on the menu, but it's still in your system. And the guy's like, oh, actually, we can't, but I can give you something that's close. We have something called the Fat Tiger. It has ham, chicken fingers, mozzarella sticks, Swiss cheese, French fries, and <laughs> honey mustard sauce stuffed between two slices of bread. And I go, that's nothing like what? <laughs> that's, that's like zero literally like it. It's like there's ham and Swiss on it, but like <laughs> fries and chicken fingers and mozzarella sticks. It is literally not that sandwich. That's how that place is. And but and if anybody's like, what? Hey, why is this, this is so long? It has nothing to do with the show. That's where they used to go on this show, Fat Sal's. Remember, they used to go hang out at Fat Sal's sometimes. <laughs> so weird. Um, but yeah, that that place, the sandwiches are. Ugh. So this one is like girly sandwiches and. And uh, Katie's like, yeah, it looks like a rom-com because they had uh, like a set designer for Nancy Meyer films or something make it. Like it looks really cute, I think. Right. Um, they are doing a lot with a small space. So they have these tiny little tables and Chef Penny's there, of course, about to fuck everyone's life up. I can tell you that much because you don't want to <laughs> fuck with Chef Penny. And don't. she's putting vases on tables and they're way too big. Like nothing else will fit on the table. It's a, it's a tall order, that restaurant. <laughs> It's literally a tall order. The sandwiches come like on a three dimensional display. So, <laughs> do you even have tables that big? You do I not. know. Listen, Chef Penny is going to make a sexy sandwich because she's the sexy chef from Food Network. So, uh, they're eating it. They're trying to sell prasad and everything. And James, so Schwartz is like, uh, yeah, hey, um, you know, it'd be fun if you had like a super savory, you know, thing like a kill the hangover type thing. And James goes, ha. You know what he wants? He wants a man witch. We all know Tom loves a sloppy Joe, right? <laughs> Everyone's like, ooh. He's like, I'd very high hope for the girls at the beginning of this endeavor, but I mean, look, I mean, it's taking so long. I mean, here we are again, still not open. It's almost like they're exactly like Tweedledee and Tweedledee Dick. Schwartz and Sandys, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, can the man have a caprese in peace? <laughs> uh, this quiz nose has turned into a final exam nose. Come on, ladies, get it together. Mm -hmm. So um, now Lisa Vanderpump won't even do this. She's like, oh, darling, another busy. Uh, another sandwich tasting at the poor people restaurant. I just can't do it. Bring the sandwiches to me. Let me know when they're desperate enough to take a loan for $10,000 and return for 90% ownership of something about her. Mm. 
So now they all go inclu- with a, the, the tray of sandwiches up to Sir, because that's where Lisa is going to be. Because Lisa cannot be bothered to walk three steps down the block <laughs> into this place. So um, they go up there, and um, and Lala's like, by the way, um, by the way, uh, Ariana, I was at your house today. Yeah, I was squirting all over your floors. <laughs> Sorry, nervous. I just like I would have told you sooner, but then we weren't any cameras around. So anyway, I wasn't planning on going because last, but like last night we went to mocktails and Schwartzy invited us, and then like Sandoval was like, you, you know, I want to join us and everything, and like he said, jo- like Sandoval might join us. Then he, she, she basically tells the whole story about how Sh- Sandoval came late to dinner. And, and Ariana's like, cool story, work. bro. Okay. And so she's like, okay, so great. Tom's Tom's a great person now. Well, the reason I wasn't at my house is because I was in the emergency room. So then she tells the story, her side of this, this dog story, which is that Tom went into her room. She had a takeout container on the nightstand after Hotel Ziggy. And he let Maya in there, but then shut her in there for hours. And so she ate everything, including the wooden skewers from the ch- chicken oh. satay. Oh, okay. So it what? So it's more like she had a takeout. Con- okay, it wasn't like there was a thing of pad thai just sitting there. It was that there was like, it wasn't like a full thing of pad thai. It was that the, that the wooden skewers were still out. So maybe it was just like, still gross. But like not as gross as just like festering. Well, who knows? Time. I mean, who knows? It sounds like you had a takeout container in in the room or whatever. With I don't know. I don't know how great. You mean like as far as yelling at her like her parents to clean her goddamn room? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying it's like because <laughs> it is possible that there like it could have been in the garbage, and that's like you know like if you have like a takeout container with like. To, like a, a, I do not leave chicken saté in my bedroom all day. No, I don't. That's disgusting, yeah. and you will get bugs. I'm still going to mommy you about smell. that. You need to put that shit downstairs. It's disgusting. Yeah. Now, yeah, smell. it's still her fucking room and her prerogative to have chicken satay in there if she goddamn wants to. You know, fucking Tom putting the dog in there. And Lala's like, that could literally kill a dog. Which, dogs really have good luck with skewers on this show because... Mia made it past this one, and remember when Raquel stabbed her dog on accident with some kind of a meat skewer last year, like a a kebab skewer or something? I mean, dogs are really not afraid of skewers on this show, I'll tell you that. The, the artist formerly known as Graham Cracker? <laughs> yes. That's when he changed his name. He was like, they're looking for me. They're coming. Yeah. The skewer gang is coming after me again. So... um so Ariana's basically like, I come home, I got home for all 30 seconds, and then I have to rush her to the vet. And they did x-rays, and the bill is $6,000. Which is fucking crazy. That is crazy. That's like us talking about going to the doctor. I was horrified. So she's like, you know, that man can't even be trusted to have decent judgment when it comes to a fucking dog. And Lala's like, well, Ariana, I would, like, highly recommend having a conversation with him. And she's like, oh, my God. Like, there's no conversation I could have with him that isn't me literally slitting his throat right now. And Katie's, (laughs) James is like, I know. I feel the same way about my (laughs) philodendron. Damn it. Still can't think of good plants. <laughs> by the way, speaking of plants, did anyone else get electrocuted by their flower this morning? Just me? <laughs> um, I feel like Ariana's dogs go into medical distress whenever betrayal is afoot. <laughs> I think this is what we're learning. Yeah. No kidding, right? That's true. So, That's a good point. So um, um, she's like, he doesn't give a fuck about what I consider to be my children. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, how dare she? That's a dog. That is not a child. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, so Lisa, yeah, Lisa, Lisa and Ken, Ken. I was trying to think of a plant. I'm like really an idiot. I was literally here, like trying to make a plant joke and couldn't. My think of one, so. my monstera plant. So speaking of monsteras, here come Lisa and Ken, and uh, she's like, "Oh, look, the girls are gonna come by because I just want to taste their sandwiches, and hopefully they've come up with something a little bit more inventive than a caprese." Am I right? I mean, it's just mozzarella and basil and tomato, and been used a billion times over by every restaurant establishment since the dawn of time. Am I right? Oh, look, here they come with a if I wanted stack to, of caprese's. If I wouldn't want, if I wanted to spend an hour with a little white round blob that didn't do anything all day, I'd just sit with Ken. Get it? Oh, ah! Get it, Ken. <laughs> 
Oh, you're the caprese now. <laughs> you are the caprese of my life. Do you remember when I recorded a single with Lionel Richie? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Caprese, oh, we're never survive unless <laughs> we get a little caprese. <laughs> So they're brought a whole tray of sandwiches. And like, oh, God, still not open, eh, girls? Have a seat. Are you desperate for little old Ursula yet, darlings? <laughs> I mean, I can't believe the sandwich shop hasn't even opened yet. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, they signed a lease over a year ago on money they spent on the place and cost a fortune. And the sandwiches, I mean, they've got to sell a shitload of sandwiches. They need to start right now. I can't believe they've gotten caught up in all this permitting. It's almost as if someone with connections has made sure that the permitting offices don't let it open. And just That's exactly just right, enough. because isn't she the one who found them that lease? Remember? She's like, oh, I found the perfect little spot right down the street from me. All it will take is a week with your voice. He had it coming. <laughs> he had it coming. Uh, <laughs> um, Lisa's just going to take over Ariana's Chicago voice. Yeah, she's doing <laughs> Chicago rehearsals. Um, okay, so here's my question about the thing, and this is not even a judgment. I know it's a surprise. It's, it's a legit question. They can't open the restaurant because of permitting for the outside patio, right? Because isn't that what they had to tear down? But why can't they open the inside of it? That's what's confusing. I really don't know. I know that, like, WeHo is a real bitch when it comes to permitting. But, like, we've also seen... Or like, anything. Or anything. Yeah. But, like, especially parking. But we've yeah. also seen places open up in WeHo before, so we know it can happen. I don't. I really don't know why it's taking this long. Yeah, it's crazy. So they talk about it a little bit, and Kate's like, oh, my God, I found out say something really juicy. Like in 2014, Schwartz kissed Sheena in Vegas. <laughs> Ken's like, Schwartz did? <laughs> oh, I can't believe that Schwartz kissed Sheena in Las Vegas when they were pretending not to be into each other, but they totally had sex, and, and that's just so disrespectful to Katie, am I right? Outside, Pearl Mozzarella. Nobody <laughs> needs to hear it from you right now, the tiny blob. All right, anyway, girls, you need to get this restaurant open, eh? And she's like, but did you hear me? Schwartz made out with Sheena. Oh, really? Schwartz is kissing Sheena. Oh, no. Who said that? Honestly, were cameras there in 2014? They didn't get it. Somebody's fired. Let's go back to 2014 and fire that lazy fuck. Is it relevant today, Katie? About as relevant as your caprese, I'd say. Change of subject. <laughs> Besides, who even said that? And Katie's like, they both have admitted it. And we see that two hours ago. Katie had confronted Schwartz about this. And she's like, so ugh, Lala told me some news that you dropped on her. What? Yeah, like you and Sheena back in the day. <sighs> um, This is so sad. <laughs> I have to say... This is the saddest storyline I've ever seen. You literally just said, you know what I found out about 2014? Stop it. <laughs> just stop it. I can't with this. And Vanderpump can't either. She's like, oh, God. I heard you guys were like, I heard you guys were like making out while Mitt Romney was <laughs> making his <laughs> keynote speech at the RNC. I mean, come on. <laughs> Do your fucking break. So now Schwartz comes over. And he's like, oh, hi, it's just me, just a little boy. It's so crazy that I, they even let me serve alcohol in here, but I've got some espresso martinis. Don't want to confuse anybody by saying that correctly on Bravo. I'll leave now. I don't want to hurt anybody. Hi, Ariana. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi, oh, Katie. And Katie goes, uh-oh, here it comes. And he spills, and, by the way, the martini is all over the table. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you say that part? No. I don't okay, even know what I'm talking about. I'm putting on lip gloss and like, I don't know. I'm in 2014 still. Like. <laughs> so uh, he spills all over and Vanderpump's like, well, no wonder why you were never a waiter. Oh. It's like, hey guys, how's it going, Ken? Oh, that's nice that you put some basil on your head. Yes, he's my little caprese. Oh, that makes sense. Oh. And Katie's like, yeah. And Lisa says, I can't believe you made that with Sheena. He's like, oh, gosh, that's a long story. Oh. And Katie says, yeah, and I was just so trusting. You've had it good for, you've had it so good for so many years. Yeah, that's uh, that's what everybody says about Schwartz. Man, he really had it good for a long time. That guy. <laughs> You're both miserable. You've always been miserable. Stop acting. 
<laughs> so Schwartz, well, to be fair, Schwartz is truly the poster boy for privilege, right? So Schwartz is like, oh, and Kate goes, but you blew it. You blew it. Ariana's like, you fumbled so hard, dude. So hard. Yeah, yeah. you fumbled so hard, and now you got sloppy Joe. Wow, it took you two whole minutes to seal that one. Remember at the beginning of the season when I was like, oh my God, I like, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to like Katie this season because she called Tom Schwartz. She said he looked like a couch. And then someone wrote us and was like, uh, actually, he said he looked like a couch. She just stole that line later for oh. the thing. So that's what she does. You know, she's like, that was funny. I'm going to steal it. So they're like, you suck, Tom. And he's like, I'm going to leave. And like, yeah, you can't take it, Tom. You can't take it. What is it? At this point, I'm starting to be Tom. I'm like, come on. How many times does he have to? Jesus Christ. It was 2014. He's done work. But then again, he did this to himself by bringing it up. Never mind. Yeah. No, I have no sympathy for him whatsoever. <laughs> oh, why, why, is he, why is Katie bringing this up again? Because you just broke this news. That's a big deal that like you and Sheena made out. Okay, It's literally not. But he did it on purpose to ruffle Katie. And now he's got Katie ruffled. And now he gets to be a big victim. You know, Now Katie is all <laughs> excited that she gets to be a big victim. But then now she's yelling at Tom Schwartz. And so now Tom Schwartz gets to be a big victim. And these two are just happy as ever in their relationship. So I don't know why we even bother with it. I'm out. I'm out. So Lisa's like... Do you feel angry at him? Rhetorical question. Of course you feel angry at him. <laughs> are you sad? Do you want to cry? Would you say that you are on the way to being a broken bird? I can fix you, darling. I can fix you. Mm. And Katie's like, he just orbits in my universe, and he just, like, fails. <laughs> That's it. So, so Ariana's like, yeah, it's like, she, he's like, rest of development. Katie's like, yeah, thank you. Yeah, arrested development. So Tom goes to the bar. And he's there with Brock and Sheena. And Schwartz is like, that was a bad idea. I just got grilled. Unlike their sandwiches. <laughs> Don't exist. <laughs> uh, and Brock's like, bro, you're sweating. Do you want to drink this and then recompose? Jesus, man. And he's like, I'm roast. They're roasting me. I mean, I guess I am roastable or steamable if you keep me in the bag. Well, let's drink then. What are they, what are they roasting you about? Seen her again. Well, let me talk about that. Uh, you know, listen, uh, they went back to that. And he goes, yeah, but like, you know, me and Katie had a tumultuous relationship. And she would just get me so upset. And I had so much pent up resentment with her that oh, I handled it in the most cowardly way. You know what I would do? I'd go out and intentionally get shit faced and make out with strangers. Oh, I'm such a coward. Do you want to make out? <laughs> Hey, but it was Katie's fault. It was Katie's fault. But I was such a coward about the way I handled all the things that Katie would do to me. <laughs> you just talk about a fucking coward. So Brock's like, okay, so you felt so repressed that that was your out. Like, that was your fuck you there, right? Dr. Brock is here. And Schwartz is like, yeah, and I'm ashamed of it. And I just want to sit down with her and be like, I'm fucking sorry. I'm so sorry. But you're a mean witch. You're so mean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Katie. Yeah, he's so ridiculous. My God. I just want to be like, I'm so fucking sorry that you made me do everything that I did. Well, Katie's overreacting from a kiss that happened 10 years ago. And Katie needs to get off a high horse because I know for a fact that there's some real double standards happening here. Can I tell you the truth? We were partying the other night and Katie left with somebody in your friend group. And he's like, what? What? He's like, I still have friends and they're in a group? Oh, that's great news. So who made out with Joe? Did Katie fuck Joe? And he's like, no, no, no. I'm saying it's your boy. Max? <laughs> I like that Brock she for a half a second pretends to actually be discreet about this. Like, I'm not going to say names. It was your bro. It was your boy. It was Brax. It was Max. <laughs> so Schwartz is best friends with Max? I didn't oh, yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Well, they were always best friends. But, of course, Max got fired from the show for having um, racist tweets back in the day. So um, I guess they're still friends and hanging out. So Brock is like, that's your mate. That's your mate, bro. I'm surprised that's Katie would, would bang somebody or make out, hook up with somebody that has that in their past it is sort of um yeah not great not great i thought max max is max is not also by the way max is also just like gross. deeply uncharismatic and gross and unattractive <laughs> max is gross beyond everything else max is gross and he's fucked everybody like literally and he has racist tweets it's like the it's it's just like it just gets worse and worse 
And I would say, don't do people ever get forgiven? Like, when is the time limit for that? But we're talking about a makeout from 12 years ago. So I don't think this is the appropriate time to say that. So, so I personally, though, that all that being said, I was I love this only to see Schwartz um, have to reel in it for for one second. He's like, yeah. really? Kitty and Max? Kitty and wow. Max. Gross, Kitty and Max? Yes. And he's like, Max is the former manager at TomTom. Tom. Those of you who are like the rest of us and pretend that one season didn't happen. <laughs> he's also a really good buddy of mine. You know, this has the telltale signs of a revenge bang. Which, I don't know. I'm not mad at a revenge bang. For, uh, personally, <laughs> Me neither. I think, I think this is a great move by Katie. I fucking love I, it. She, she played his it. own game right back at him. And you can see him becoming rageful but he's trying to also keep his like sweet little boy thing and he's like can't he does not know how to reconcile the two no look did i wish katie had better taste of course but i've always yeah. wished katie had better taste i mean i said that on their, their wedding episode <laughs> so yeah um, but i love this for her so um and brock is like yeah i mean i didn't watch i wasn't in the room but we sent a message where you at and his location was at a house and he's like what and he goes yeah and then he sent me an emoji of a face eyes and then a mouth like a straight line <laughs> and then brock does it Brock does a surprisingly effective um, straight straight mouth emoji impersonation. <laughs> it's like when I ask, when Sheena says, "What do you want for dinner?" and I say, "A gordita," <laughs> instead of enchilada. It's like when Sheena says, "Should we get a babysitter?" and I'm so shocked, I just go. <laughs> and he goes, "Oh so my god, that's a bad emoji." <laughs> <laughs> so Brock's like, "Yeah," and then. Um, he said it was bound to happen. Don don don. Oh, sorry, I made that sound effect, but it's a big deal. <laughs> if there were a don 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 emoji, he probably would have sent that. <laughs> so Brock's like, after Hotel Ziggy, we decided to go to an after party, and she never invited Max. He just rocked up, and then Kay was there, and throughout the night, we could see them getting closer and closer. And as we sought to leave, they kind of leave together. In some ways, he was almost Waltz and Matilda, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So he tells us this story, and um, he's like, basically, Katie left with Max, okay? And then Sheena is following their location, so <laughs> they could see that the next Yenta. morning, Sheena knew exactly where Katie was, which was his building. Or he she, was at her building, whatever. Sheena tries to make it seem so normal. She's like, well, later that night, I checked his location, and I'm like, hmm, I don't think you live in the same building as Katie. It's like, okay, fine, because you were asking, where's Max? You look at the location. And then she goes, and then the next morning... Just out of curiosity, I checked again, and he was still there. She goes, it's not like it's some creepy thing. I mean, I just happened to be checking his location multiple times. <laughs> she has 58 people's locations in her phone, by the way. <laughs> it's like not creepy. I just wanted to know. wanted to make sure he was safe. Make sure that like he got home okay. That's it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What a mess. Hold on. I got lost in my notes. Sorry. So, well, so she tells the story. It's like it's totally normal. And Sandoval arrives at Sir. And so he's wearing kind of like a Western getup. Um, and he's walking with tea. And uh, everyone's like watching them come in and everything. And she's like, um, are they coming in now? And so Tom has just gone on a date with T. And thankfully, this was just relegated to a quick flashback because I actually remember this was in the trailer and we're like, oh, we had a whole discussion. Are they at Highland Park Bowl? Whatever. Thankfully, the whole bowling date, like five seconds of airtime. I'm so glad. Uh, but they just I feel for T date. because she's putting in so much work. Like she's showing up to so many things and dating this fucking loser old man. And they don't even show her scenes. Like they all get cut. <laughs> I, I feel, I kind of feel for her. Like she's making an effort, you know? Yeah. So then Brock's like, you missed it. Sandoval's like, oh, dude, what happened? Was it more breathing exercises? Hold on. <laughs> He's like, did you go through, did you go through any emotional trauma? <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. God, that felt good. <laughs> oh, were you guys locking dogs in rooms? No, no, no. So Schwartz is like, oh, Max and Katie went home and made out. No, they touched peepees. And Sandoval's like, there's a total double standard when it comes to Katie. There always has been. It's so fucking obvious how ridiculous that is. Oh, please. Katie is not allowed this is to not go bang standard. Max. Now, listen, could she have chosen better? Of course. But 
she's not with Tom. She's been away from Tom forever. And who cares if that's his best friend? He earned it. He's shown no respect. Why the fuck should she? Good for her. Yeah, the like the the contract is null and void, and it was Schwartz who voided it. So, and Sandoval doesn't get to weigh in about what's proper or improper when it comes to having relations with people. The Sandoval, I wouldn't let Sandoval weigh in at a Weight Watchers meeting at this point. Okay, you have lost all your rights to weigh in anywhere, sir. Yeah. God, I'm um, really obsessed with Weight Watchers today. It's come up like ten times. It's, I can't it's let it Janelle go. Janelle with us. It's Janelle with us. <laughs> I'm hungry. So then, um, <laughs> I'm so hungry. Lisa... I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Starving. So uh, the girls go to the bar, and this leaves uh, Vanderpump time to talk to the boys. So then uh, Ariana goes to the bar, and she sees T there. This is so and great. <laughs> she goes, "This is so great." Hi. How, so how old are you? And she's like, 25. And she's, "That makes sense." <laughs> That makes <laughs> She goes, I'm sure you've been given a very different version of events from reality, but don't waste your time with a 41-year-old narcissist. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's yes. just like the most like glorious, um, like glorious, obvious cock blocking. Yes, I love this. And so Sheena's like, um, what did you say to Schwartz? So then, um, uh, by the way, also T's reaction to all of this, she's a pro too. Because she was just like, oh my God, hi. <laughs> she was just smiling. She's like, no, I will not let any of this affect me. Remember, like, this is just for the TikTok followers. Smile to the cameras, smile to the cameras. So Brock's like, well, I told Schwartz because, you know, it wasn't your, like, I, I didn't want you to be the one to say something about, about this. And she was like, I wasn't going to. Well, then why are you so upset about it? Well, why would you do that? And that's like not our place because our place is actually, I can actually show you. This is the address of our place. It's on my, our location. That's our place. Well, oh my God, Tori's at our place. That's so funny. <laughs> oh my God, Summer Moon is at Sizzler. Why is she there? <sighs> And he's like, but you were going to say something if I didn't. She's like, no, I wasn't. So uh, she's like, oh, my God. Katie and I are finally in a good place. Why are you doing this? And Sheena, he's like, Sheena, pull your head in. Put, pull your head in or I'll go home. I'll go home, Sheena. <laughs> and so he's all pissed off at her. Meanwhile, uh, we cut back to Ariana and T. And Ariana's like, well, while I was at my grandmother's funeral, they were fucking in my house. And she goes, oh, my God, you were, like, so strong. She goes, yeah. <laughs> so well, <laughs> she's like, well, listen here. You're a prize, okay? He's not a prize. Hey, would you agree, Sheena? He's not the prize. And she goes, yeah, he's not the prize. He is 17 feet away from us, though. <laughs> there, there actually is a prize that's about three miles away. Um, so they, they go back to the table and, um, Lala tells Sheena, Lala can tell that Sheena is upset. So she asks her what's wrong. And she was like, I'm just like, just ask Brock. I'm like so angry right now. I'm like, not gonna say another word about this until like about, you know, in about two minutes. So Katie's like, Brock, what happened? Hey, well, she's upset. I spoke to Schwartz about last night's interaction with you, Nix. And of course, Brock announces the entire to the entire table because that's how this group rolls and at the table this is where the uh possibly the most annoying <laughs> debut of a below deck character in ages which is actually yes. is a blessing from the lord so thank you sir but what's yeah, his we, name ben so his name is dylan so this was this while this whole scene that we're discussing unfurls there is a really handsome guy next to katie and i think we saw him in the trailer we're like who's that well it turns out for people who don't watch below deck because it turns out a lot of people don't watch Below Deck, who watch Vanderpump Rules. He is the new Decky who debuted on Monday on Below Deck. And he's this like hot 23 year old, but he's like also, he's like, I'm all about positivity. I really, I really care because I was like fat for my life and I was made fun of it. So now I have the best body of them all. And I just like, I see people on the side of the street. I like put up my hand and it's like, if you go high five and they don't even know what's going on, but they'll always remember it. And it's like, who is this? Hot and super annoying person. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now here he is on here Vanderpump is. Rules. On making a double debut. Yeah. Unexplained. Like, there's no context to it. He's just there. Yeah. Um, he's just friends with them. They're Bravo people, okay? They probably met <laughs> at BravoCon. Just really quick. It's really quick. Especially, it's really hard for a below-deck person to cross over into the world of Vanderpump Rules. And he did it, like, 
within 24 hours of just even appearing on Blue Low Deck for the first time. I've never seen anything happen so quickly. It's because I'm thin now, mother. It's because I'm thin now. <laughs> you give her a high five. I have everything <laughs> I wanted Be friends because with me. I'm thin. Um, so Brock announces to the table that uh, the interaction with you and Max. So Ariana's like, wait, what do you mean the interaction with you and Max? Boyans? Max Boyans? And Katie's like, uh, wait, uh, what do you mean? What, like the worst liar ever. Don't She's like, cast what? cast her on the traitors. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, what are you she's like, what's going about? on? So Lala's like, oh my god, does she have a thing with Max Boring? That is so awkward. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can I get another napkin? <laughs> I just squirted over the below deck guy. So Katie's like, so like, Max came over to my place afterwards. Like, so what? And Brock goes, yeah. It's like, yeah, so he like came over. <sighs> oh, so what? All right, so you guys just watch Netflix and chill then, eh? And she goes, what's the big deal, Brock? And he goes, oh, no big deal. I was just letting him know that his best friend was at his ex-wife's house. That's all. She goes, what does he need to know? <sighs> because he got his ass round for keeping it in the friend group when you went to his best friend. That's why. Katie's like, um, when I asked him like three months into our separation not to fucking fuck around in the group, he did not give a single fuck about what I thought. So who cares? Agree with Katie. Yeah. Listen, it happens 100%. a few times a year. 100% agree with Katie. And Lala's like, oh my God, did they sleep together? And she's like, oh my God, I'm staying out of it. It's not my business, but yes, I have access to their camera. And I heard a lot of moaning. <laughs> I heard a, I heard like moaning and then banging up a headboard. And then I heard this sound. <laughs> oh my God. That's like Lala. Katie's mating call. <laughs> Lala's like, I don't recognize this version of Katie. Okay, like the Katie I know doesn't seek revenge. She just doesn't. She just talks about it, but she's like really lazy. Okay, look at her music career. <laughs> she doesn't actually get up and do it. <laughs> Brock's like, and Brock's like, well, oh, go ahead, Ben. Am I? No, you do it. You are the no. Brock. I see the floor to you. Are the well, Brock. All right. Well, if my best friend sleeps with my wife, first I high five him and say, that's not an easy pair of pants to get into, is it? And then I'd headbutt him. <laughs> Say, so we'll talk about this. We'll compare notes later, bro. Okay, well, I know no one asked me, but ugh, I don't want to talk about this. So I checked to see if my friends got home safe, and I saw his location. And I was like, oh, maybe he dropped Katie off. And then I checked again to see, like, did she get out of the car okay? And then, like, I checked again. And then, like, the next day it was, like, still there. And I was like, oh. Katie's like, Sheena, what the fuck are you even saying? <laughs> what the fuck are you even saying? <laughs> And she's like, no, like, Brock's on my phone. And that's, like, why he went and, like, said something now. That's it. Like, I was just like, oh. And I was just like, oh. And I was like, oh. That's it. Oh, my God. So now Lala. So, of course, this affects Lala, right? Because it's everything. So she's like, oh, my God. Like, Billy, Billy, this group is too weird. Like, everyone's just so full of shit. Like, I can't take it. Ariana's lying about why she's still in the house and her financial situations. You've got she, which I don't Wait, get. By that. the way, what was that? I don't know. Like, <laughs> what was that? Ariana's pretending that she's poor when she's really loaded from all of these uh, yeah. brand deals. I guess is what she's saying. And I she's think like, they and forgot got, to give us context. Yeah, yeah she's like, you got Sheena like following every single person's fucking location, and <laughs> which is amazing. And she and Schwartz are like hiding that they made out one time, and now Katie's hooked up with Max, who's Schwartz's best friend, and like that's a big secret. The way everyone is moving is just like <sighs> gross. I hate when people keep secrets, which is why people didn't know I was dating. <laughs> If they're going to keep a secret, at least get a Range Rover out of it. Yeah. Which is why people didn't know I was dating Rand for like three years. Uh, like, I'm leaving. This group is so fucking chaotic. And the weird, like, I don't want to be transparent about anything. No, I'm in Noitsk. I'm leaving. I love you all. Goodbye. Squirt out. <laughs> and uh, that's it. It ends with somehow Lala being the most offended person at the table. Which is, you know, of course it did. I am so mad right now. Uh. But nice, uh, nice return to the mess with literally everybody. And I love that Sheena is still fucking stalking people. That is so funny that people let Good Sheena follow their location. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> Had a girl. So girl. funny. Listen, what a messy episode. I loved it. Like, 
this show still has it. It's a shocking. It's just shocking. They are so toxic to each other, all of them. Yeah. Still got it, people. Still got it. All right, everybody. Thank you for e- if you're still here. You are really a fucking trooper. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this five part. <laughs> My God, this was literally the longest we've done in a long time. So thank you, everybody, for being here, for all your support. Go get tickets. You're up. Blah, blah. I'm not even going to bug you with that shit right now because Don't we've taken bug. so much. We Our love you guys. Up. Don't even bug. <laughs> we'll talk to you for Don't Summer House bug. coming up next. Yeah. Oh, can't even wait. Can't even bye. wait. Bye. 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 bye.